Enjoy the show. We're doing it live. Are you having a stroke? Are you saying names? I am Should having I a stroke right now. <laughs> Tom Cruise was Hulk Hogan? I yes. don't remember that one. I think he could do it. No, but uh, Bill Murray was the Human Torch. Steppenwolf's going to be there. That's <laughs> They're awesome. They're going to be playing. They're going to be playing oh. live. Live! I'm your Bill and Ted yeah. moment. Put them yeah, in the I'm, Iron Maiden. What kind of spinoff? A Wakanda spinoff. <laughs> Wakanda spinoff. God, that was so corny. So, of course, this is Purjangers and Wallhangers 194th podcast. We are the Triforce podcast, of course. I am Matthew Bucherill, the Matt Man. To my right in the Purjanger box, we have Katerina Thermoscaro, Wonder Cat. We have Christopher Bristow, the old Hello. man. And, of course, we also have one hour Iron Kelly. Kelly Collins joining the podcast as well. Yo. And we also have our omnipotent presence that is the producer, big brother, Stephen Bucarell. Welcome to the Triforce Podcast. And, of course, it's the only podcast where you're going to find four testicle Krogans, as well as the latest in nerdy news and geek culture. And we start off this podcast the very same way. Tonight, The Flash is skipping in time. Wanda's secret cameo. Nintendo pulls out, giggity, Gary's Sandbox, Monkeys playing Pong and more on the Triforce podcast. And we want you to hop on over here to PJANDWH.com where you're going to find all of the funniest moments from these podcasts that we do right up at the top. You're going to find last week's Triforce podcast, Charismic King Kong Stink Eye, as well as the last Lug Nuts podcast, Quantum State Tires. And like somebody you will see on our page in the future did, you can hop on over here to contact the team and let us know. Do you want to do a podcast? Do you have something luggy and nutty then a cool vehicle that you want to pop on? Do you want to be part of the Triforce podcast and be a member? Yes, yes, they do. Contact yes, us. Yes, you do. Leave us your name, your email, your message. Find us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. And, of course, we're going to st start off here with our first story, which, of course, is... Muted. Yes, Pacific Rim, nice. the black anime. The series trailer reveals a debut date. Netflix began streaming a trailer for Pacific Rim, the black, uh, the black anime series, on Monday. The trailer reveals the anime's March 4th debut date on Netflix. Polygon Pictures of Blame, Godzilla, uh, Kajawa, oh, Jesus Christ. Kaiju. Kaiju, there you go. Kaiju Watsuki film oh, trilogy. I... <laughs> Are you having a stroke? Are you saying names? I am Should having I a stroke right now. <laughs> He's here physically, but not mentally. Are you having a stroke or are you pronouncing names? I think that's the most accurate thing <laughs> ever said to describe me. Is it twice Sometimes you, you gotta ask. Is it, is it best in New York or by train? <laughs> <laughs> so they're producing a 3D animated series based on live action Pacific Rim's films. Uh, Craig Kyle and Greg Johnson, suck it, I can pronounce American names, um, are co-showrunners on the series by Legendary Entertainment. And the story follows two siblings, an idealist teenage boy and a naive young sister who are forced to pilot an abandoned Jaeger across a hostile landscape in a desperate attempt to find their missing parents. Frank says hi, all. Frank Percy, Hi, welcome Frank. to it. Now, hey, these Frank. do sound like bad parents. What's up, Frank? You, ha you left your teenage boy and the naive young sister alone, and now they have to pilot these gigantic, you know, Gundam machines to find you. Do you not um, have a cell phone? Pokemon, Dora. <laughs> Poco, what? <laughs> All those parents be abandoning their kids. Well, Ash. Anything in Matt's Japanese anime collection. <laughs> now, to be fair, Ash was have like 12 years old. Right? <laughs> in a while? Was, what does hen uh, hentai have, not... have to do with this? It doesn't. Everything. <laughs> but. No idea. I mean, Ash was like 12 years old when he went out to start catching Pokemon and just walk out in the wild wilderness to where, you know, a Charizard could run around and just burn you to a crisp. 
No, no, the no, mom was right. like, "Have fun." That's all right. He Dora just go was allowed to roam around the jungle her. with a monkey that had boots on. I mean, yeah, the monkey's gonna kill her. It's gonna rip her face <laughs> off. The monkey's <laughs> gonna rip her face off. He really will. Yeah, mom and dad I mean, gone. Too sounds like a party. A oh yeah, in the map, she was hallucinating that map. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there may have been, you know, LSD, maybe kept on repeating mushrooms, himself. some kind of hallucinogens in Dora's future, but that's not anything to do with Pacific Rim. But you'll find this anime popping up on Netflix on March 4th. Another thing popping up in the future is the next story, which, of course, is Justice Society World War II drops a trailer. And, of course, oh with... Official descript, uh, officially described as a time-skipping World War II thriller that sees Barry Allen travel back in time thanks to his first encounter with the Speed Force. This is the 42nd entry in DC Universe movie franchise to, and the first to feature the Golden Age superhero team, the Justice Society, Previously appeared in various live-action incarnations on TV, like Smallville, the CW's uh, Arrowverse, and Star uh, Star Girl. The Justice so- uh, Society World War II finds modern-day Barry Allen prior to his formation of the Justice League, discovering he can run faster than he even imagined, and that milestone results in his first encounter with the speed force the flash is promptly launched into a, into the midst of battle but primarily between the nazis and the golden age dc superheroes known as the justice society of america led by wonder woman the group also includes our man black canary hawkman steve trevor for some reason wonder woman's boyfriend's in there <laughs> and of course the golden age flash jay garrick isn't he dead well, this Not is World War point. II. Oh. So the Flash quickly volunteers to assist his fellow heroes in tipping the scales of war in their favor while the, new, uh, while the team figures to, uh, tries to figure out how to send him home. But it's only World War II, and they haven't figured out the transistor yet, so they're going to have an uphill battle. You know, I mean, I'm just it's saying. It's just World War II. It was a revolutionary oh, invention. You know, and transistors really they change the world. Transistors, well, them and diodes. But it's releasing on Blu-ray and digital later this year. Um, I'm a big fan of the Justice Society of America because we haven't seen a lot of them in animated or live action film. We have seen, you know, obviously Star Girl. I started going through uh, going through that. I did not get far. I didn't either. <laughs> but I stopped and I started watching Stargate as we're gonna, one again. We're gonna see <laughs> we're gonna see the Justice Society of America pop up in Black Adam. So yeah, Stargate, was that was that show better than the original movie? Yes. Yes. Hundred percent. Fantastic. All of them. It was great. I never there were like three different T V series that spin out of that. Oh, yeah. it was great. Atlanta. Oh my god. Good. That I would say is one? like the first two seasons of SG one art a skosh. Mm-hmm. Slow, a skosh. Just but a it but it once builds up to something it, amazing. It just like the seasons fly by. They're, it's so good. Because yeah, I never yeah. watched the show, but I love no, the you need to. movie with Kurt Russell. Me oh too. no, you and need that was to. Part yeah. of the reason why I didn't watch the show right away was because yes. I was so attached to the characters in the film that I didn't exactly. want to see That's exactly other representations why I of them. I like the film and I like the show. I was I like, like, oh, I like Star well, Let's them watch both. the show. They both have their own charms. Yeah, they do. But the show is 100% different. The show really is yeah, good. That, and they do have some of the original cast from the film pop up on the series. Yeah. It's like really the right reason why I didn't is exactly what you said. Like, I like the movie so much that I didn't want to, like, ruin it by watching the show and having it be bad. No, the show's really good. I, I 100% would recommend it. I haven't seen all of the spinoffs, just SG-1. Um, but I wanted to rewatch SG-1 so I could start Atlantis and all the other yeah, Off-shoot. SG-1 right, was in the watch. rotation of shows for me, just like it, it was, was like SG-1, Thunder. You remember that? Hulk Hogan, him and another yep. guy rode around in a in a really uh, smart boat. It was an awesome show. Thunder boat? Yes. It was, no, it was called Thunder, but the boat was called like you know, Thunderboat or something. I remember that now. Holy it was Tropic s- Sun. No, it wasn't no. Tropic Thunder. That's with it Robert was, Downey uh, Jr. Thunder, it was, uh, uh, because... It was Thunder, and it's then the we, Hulk Hogan show. 
Yeah, and then we ended up seeing like a movie that was like had something to do with Thunder, but it was like, you know, Tom Cruise. It was not Hulk Hogan. Tom was, Cruise was Hulk Hogan? I yes. don't remember that one. I think he could do it. No, but uh, Bill Murray was the Human Torch. That's a different story. Um, but <laughs> I really I really appreciated uh, that show. Uh, both of those shows, what, really. What, what were we originally talking about? I don't know what this video has to do with Just anything that we're talking of about. We were talking about Stargirl, and I said that I stopped watching Stargirl. Oh, it went on to something Stargate. Call of Duty. Justice. But with the Justice Society... We see Hawkman, which hasn't had a lot of um, love in this iteration because he was originally, you know, Justice Society of uh, Justice League animated series brought him in, um, but it went, well, Hawk Girl in, and then Justice League Un- Unlimited brought him in. But we haven't seen him part of like the Justice League of the Justice Society. He was rather. an equal opportunity hire. An Hour Man. Hour Man's dope as fuck. You know, we get a lot of the look at this season or, or this style with the animated series to where DC, they they rebooted it with Justice League uh, dark, uh, dark Apocalypse War, right? So now we're seeing Batman Soul of the Dragon. We're seeing now The Flash encounter the Speed Force for the first time, like an old person with Alzheimer's. It's, you know, once again, it's one of these great, iconic animated series uh, animated films rather that you're getting from dc that we, you're really going to latch on to uh i'm gonna interrupt you for just a second to say it was thunder in paradise yes yeah that's I the did. name of the fucking show yeah i, I love that show. that's why you're the vip and After the mvp you said that I, it was gonna it was gonna bug the, the shit crap out, out of me because i remember watching that now thunder in paradise it was such a great show man i love thunder in paradise Hulk Hogan, he fucking killed that role. And that other All right? guy, whoever the hell he was. They were like ex-military. Yeah. And they were just solving crimes out of a fucking high-tech boat. It was okay. so dope. I used to bandana. watch that and Airwolf. Oh, oh Airwolf. yeah, Airwolf. <laughs> I remember Airwolf. Coming like, out of the, Airwolf out was of the great turbine. when I was six. Mm. Now we're going to steer this podcast back <laughs> on the rails. Off of really 90s television back on to what is <laughs> new. The 80s. What I'm best at. <laughs> <laughs> Who remembers 80s television? <laughs> but, that was a really great segue. <laughs> I'll tell you what's a better segue, which is the <laughs> the true Justice League has now found a release date with the Snyder Cut. You scroll down, we'll see some new posters. HBO Max has announced today that the Justice League Snyder Cut will officially release on Thursday, March 18th. two game and DVD exchange thumbs up. So exciting. Yes, it does. Mark is super excited for the Snyder Cut. My Um, brother. I kind of. (laughs) Yes. (laughs) I kind of feel like you're being sarcastic, but that's Maybe probably a bit, why I'm banned from his store. A bit facetious, but mm. while also unveiling an official synopsis for the film, a, tri- a trio of very S- Zack Snydery teaser posters are shown for the big event. The press release announced the. Uh, the press release announcing the release date makes no mention of a theatrical release, but it does mention that the film will be releasing on HBO services in Europe, across Nordics, Central Europe, Spain, and Portugal, as well as on the HBO Go service on in Asia. And they have a whole bunch of weird fucking tacky shit they want to do with America, but you'll be able to watch it on March 18th. That's the main thing. I'm very I excited I, I about this. we have this. to let it breathe, though. You can let it ruminate. Yes. You can let it ruminate. Absolutely. HBO Max has also unveiled the posters here, which are fairly fitting. There's a ripped Justice League flag on a rip uh, on a pile of rumble. There's the Justice League logo also made out of rumble and a rumble. damaged film canister with the name Snyder on there as a nod to the Snyder cut. So in the Snyder cut, determined to install in Sue Superman's ultimate sacrifice was not in vain. Bruce Wayne, also Ben Affleck, um, aligns forces with Diana Prince, Gail Gadot, uh, with plans to recruit a team of metahumans to protect the world from an approaching threat of catastrophic proportions. Oh, no. The task proves more difficult oh, than Bruce God. imagined as uh, each of the Burn. recruits must face 
the demons of their own past to transcend, which has held them back, allowing them to come together, finally forming an unprecedented league of heroes. Dun, dun, dun. Now united, Batman, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, <laughs> Cyborg, and The Flash may be too late to save the planet from Steppenwolf, Desaad, and Darkseid. Steppenwolf? And not the band. Steppenwolf's going to be there. That's <laughs> They're awesome. They're going to be playing. They're going to be playing Ooh. live. Live! I'm getting a villain Ted yeah. moment. Put them yeah, in the I'm... Iron Maiden. <laughs> yeah. Steppenwolf, Iron Maiden, Slayer. Man, I, They're I, all going to be there. Be magic carpet ride. Someone call Metallica. <laughs> They're going to want to join. It's going to be great. All the Guar, Metallica, <laughs> Slipknot. Everyone's going to be there. It's going to be a heavy metal <laughs> mania. And Cyborg is MC. A new ride at one. Yes, all the all the (laughs) ride of Snyder Cut. (laughs) My daughter was just literally smacking me because I had one of her shoes I didn't know I had. Okay. Well, you shouldn't keep the heart shaped flip flop for yourself, Dad. Honestly, your feet are too big for them. You're going to stretch them out, and she's not going to wear them. Stop being selfish. It matches his shirt. They don't sell them in his size. They're. There's that pink bow on it. That does not match whatever they, that color he's She got puts on. them on her hands more yeah. than she does her feet. I don't know why. She likes to do shoe hands. She's Who doesn't? You Wait, you telling me you guys board. don't do shoe hands? Better shoe hands than scissor hands. That's yeah. Ain't that the truth. As she's actually walking <laughs> on them behind me. <laughs> ain't that the truth. Now, while you'll watch... Clog you. You'll watch the <laughs> Snyder Cut. On March 18th, but another thing you're going to be watching in the future is the next story, which, of course, is... That was a good segue. Absolutely, Connor. What the crock? <laughs> <laughs> He's really trying to have this show go somewhere, and we're we're not... You're not having out. it today. I'm sorry. You're really not. I'm very sorry. No. <laughs> I don't know what's up with today. Everybody's scatterbrained, which is fine. Iron Kelly's here. Okay. We should take a nap. Break We're in and shock and all. The moon is that going into retrograde. That's what it is. We're in shock and oh. all that a mem- uh, the person that does Zetrayu gaming is actually Mercury's joining. in Gatorade. So I wouldn't do up. the two together. Mercury and Gatorade. That Don't sounds worry. poisonous. In about thirteen That's minutes, I gotta put her to bed real quick. <laughs> he says real quick. Real we'll quick. See him tomorrow. I wish. Yeah, I did. No, no joke. She takes it. Like, she went she Real used to quick be like light. a minute down. Now it's like, I got to force her to go to sleep. And it takes like 20 minutes. Damn. On to the next story. One thing you're not going to have to force. <laughs> One thing you're not going to have to put to sleep is this next story. Nah, well, that's because Black Panther Wakanda spinoff series is in the works over at Disney+. Plus. What kind of spinoff? A Wakanda spinoff. <laughs> Wakanda spinoff. God, that was so corny. Yeah. What was it the last podcast? It was something I said. It oh, it was the Kevin Hart thing. I was I was editing the podcast and I was like, now for a short story, your laugh <laughs> made me laugh for about twenty minutes. It took me that much longer to edit the podcast <laughs> oh, just because sorry. that simple joke should not have been that funny. <laughs> but it is. I'm telling you, when I, I don't know suits. what it is going, but if I'm tired, everything is funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry. The dopamine kicks in. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what's hilarious. Director Ryan Coogler and his production company, Proximity Media, are working in a spinoff series that takes place in Wakanda. And it features a taxi cab driver named Mohinder. No, I'm kidding. God, wouldn't we all love that? Eh. Don't we all want Mohinder to just be a taxi cab driver in Wakanda? I would love that if that's the series. I'm in. I'm sorry, Mr. Poole. Um, so as reported by deadline, proximity media has signed a five year exclusive deal, uh, Thank TV you, deal with Disney. So we're going to be seeing his production company with a, a lot more as we go. And he's going to be a lot more involved now. Black Panther, Black Panther two, he's coming full force with these two movies. And obviously they're not recasting Chadwick Boseman, which is a smart move. Maybe we get Michael B. Jordan to come back. Maybe we just leave it all on Siri and I would really bring in Namor. Love to see Michael B. Jordan get some kind of hero's arc, you know? Yeah, that yeah. that would be fitting. You know, kind of leave the legacy of of Chadwick 
to to be T'Challa. Do you bring him back for this yeah. series then? For the Wakanda no, no, make series? him a new character and never mention that he looks exactly like that. Well, I think that like would have that more to do with Jordan <laughs> wanting to commit to a series that way. He may not want to. He's doing well. Well, in, they can even doing, pull this but... as an anthology of just different stories from around Wakanda. You know what I mean? Different yeah, yeah, heroic true. stories. And then you could be. give him this whole redemption arc eventually to where you just involved, have it as a story. Like fully. You well, know, and the, the thing arc. with Michael B. Jordan, yes, he did some pretty heinous things, but his story is not one that makes him like a super villain. He was still justified. It's not they, like they, he went so far that there's not there's no coming back from that. So having him, well, he wasn't after really going killed. over the fall, they and even really the way he went him. over there was in a way with honor, you know. Yeah, he wasn't really killed though. I mean, he just kind of like fell over the waterfall, which I don't know. Black Panther survived that shit. Yeah, you can fucking. I mean, you can bring Killmonger back, and that's what back. I'm saying. Like it, the president was already sent there. Yeah, he, he just sent there. So I, I actually would like to see that, but I don't know that he would commit to a TV show that way. I'd like to see him go full Super Saiyan because he had the Vegeta, you know, <laughs> front. He just comes back like you underestimate my power, and then just <laughs> you know, full Super, Super Saiyan 9, Vegeta. <laughs> you know. <laughs> Frank says. No, he can't see Jordan as Black Panther. No. No. I mean, it's a nice thought, but I honestly, I really think that Siri would be a great Black Panther to step up the, you know, the the actual relationship between those two characters in the first movie and even in, like, you know, uh, Infinity War and Endgame. You got that real brother-sister kind of feel to it to where I think her character would step up in the Black Panther role, and you could show that off in the Wakanda series. I think series. she would be like a different kind of Black Panther than who we had, you know, as than T'Challa. As she insulted Black Tony there. Stark and Bruce Banner at oh, yeah, their, absolutely. But at she's their construction not like, of Vision, you know? I don't know how to phrase what I'm saying without it sounding like an insult because I don't mean it as an insult. She's, she's a sassy bitch. Yeah, well, she is, but she's like more of an intellectual. She's yes. not more like brute, spr brute strength. Bruce um, strength. Like I can't. She has form more of an analytical today. mind to solve a problem. Yes. So I see her being a different kind of Black Panther, which is not a bad thing. It just is. Are people going to be receptive to it? it is. Yeah, but who cares? People made such a connection. They already have such a strong attachment. Frank says, Siri, to, if they do her as, as in comics, which is exactly right. If you pull oh, yeah. from that comic storyline, I think you could have a really strong Black Panther, too, even though the main star that really sunk in with everybody in that first movie, you could evolve that into having but your first you remember live that action Suri female as Black Panther. Black Panther didn't do that well in the comics as far as sales so it's a different time that's though. what i'm saying it's not that it's yeah that i don't like the idea i love the idea i just hope that the audience is receptive to it especially well that could also lead black panther we lost black panther the way that we did with chadwick's passing yeah but that could also so. lead to the all-female avengers because then you have a female black panther you have captain marvel you have wasp you have you, have you know Thor. nebula and then thor with you know jane foster that is a powerful movie to where I would I would absolutely if watch that. If they do it better the than they Avengers. did in Endgame, I am here for it. Absolutely. I was about to say the same thing. So, Kugler says that uh, while talking about the New Deal, Kugler said that as avid customer uh, consumers of television, we couldn't be happier to launching our television business with Bob Iger, Dana Walden, and all the amazing uh, studios under the Disney umbrella. We look forward to learning, growing, and building the relationship with audiences all over the world through Disney platforms. We are especially excited that we will be taking our first leap with Kevin Feige, Luis D. Esposito, Victor Alonso, and their partners at Marvel Studios, where we will be working closely with them on select MCU shows for Disney+. Plus. We're already in the mix on some projects we can't wait to share. So Frank, five years, he has all those sh a bunch of shows. It sounds like he's going to be working on. Frank says comics and movie audiences are different. 
Well, that's they, very they, true too. They are different, but you know they're different now than when they were first consumed too. So you have to look at who's consuming them in this time period versus the comics when they were first written. Well, that's why I think that Marvel is doing their cinematic universe right because it's a separate universe. It's not 616. It's a separate universe in where they can pick and choose from their favorite comic lines and apply it to the character that they as to the story as they see fit. And that's where you get these really great storylines to where you can have the Scarlet Witch, who in the comics is a mutant, and now you can use her to bring mutants into the fold because a lot of people are saying that's where they're going. And there's things that to where you can do in the comics that are completely ridiculous because you know your audience. But as soon as you try to bring that to a live stage, it's completely ridiculous and you'll get laughed out of the room. Like Thanos originally started the uh, Infinity War because he wanted to impress death. He wanted to fuck death. And get really cheap cable. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Why else Obviously. would you do it? Isn't that you know? everybody's dream, I mean, though? come on. And Mephisto, not Mephisto, has <laughs> his ear and telling him at well. one point, he's like, dude, you're not going to impress death if you're just killing him that easily. You need to lower the power of the gauntlet. And he's like, yeah. That is a completely comic line to where it wouldn't really work in a movie because that's not him. something you know, a villain would do. Like, you know what? I'm killing you way too easy. Yeah, and they killed him already. Well, yeah. But that's the thing, man. You know, there's twice, a lot of different ways that they, they could do this him. smartly. Well, they've been doing a pretty solid job of it so far. So I am, as always, ever hopeful for this stuff. I'm always excited yeah. for what's coming. Absolutely. I just hope that they do the right thing. I'll tell you also what's coming. It's the next story. That was oh. a good segue. God damn right it was, buddy. Thank you. I'll be here all week. Thank you. So After, now that he's getting control of the podcast, <laughs> War Machine will appear. Notice how that happened once Twitchy Wilson left. Damn, isn't that crazy? Twenty twenty one's big game. Oh, with Twenty and twenty one dollars free. You don't need that. <laughs> War Machine will appear in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. During an interview with Bro Bible, actor Don Cheadle, uh, Don Cheadle discussed his MCU future as James Rhodey Rhodes. That's honestly a horrible nickname. Rhodey Rhodes? <laughs> Rhodey Rhodes. We could think of something better than that. Like, wh what Gimbo. is that? That's better. All right. <laughs> it's much better. Rhodey Rhodes? No effort put in. Mounty Mountains? Yes. You know, what are we doing? Dirty Dirt? Like... Come on now. Those also are in like porn names now. <laughs> I really Went to a different podcast. <laughs> <laughs> the War Machine. Uh, it was during this interview that Cheadle confirmed that he will appear in Falcon Winter Soldier. His role in the series was not previously reported, but there was some speculation about him returning for the show. Cheadle didn't reveal how big a role War Machine will have in Falcon Winter Soldier, uh, though... Now, Falcon Winter Soldier is confirmed to feature War Machine. It also means the show could set up Rhodey's oncoming solo adventure. The Ar Marvel Studios is developing an Armor Wars series for Disney+, Plus, which is said to directly show the causality of Tony's death and what he feared in Civil War really coming to fruition to where this technology, these powers are getting into the wrong hands. And this is the Tony Stark technology side. We already know is where this series is going, where I really feel that if we get <clears throat> a really good War Machine series, he's good for a series. I don't think Rhodey's really good for a movie. Getting him in on a TV series, that's something that you could really build that character. And now when you see him in the films, it's going to mean that much more. That's where I see these TV series coming into, just like Wanda and Vision. I wouldn't see them in their own standalone movie, but this TV series, just like Falcon Winter Soldier, Loki, all these Ms. Marvel, all these people that they're doing in the, in the TV series just seems smart, you know? It's like adding salt. For everyone, though. Like, the small screen can kind of, you know, slow burn those stories as needed, and then the, the big pops when you get 
you know, the, the major, you know, girth of the MCU out on the big screen. Giggity. Right. Really whip that girth out there. <laughs> Show the, the world. You're whip the, your girth. The, girth. Yeah. Whip the girth of the MCU out and just See, that, poke that him in the eye with your girth. That, that was just yeah. an all you. <laughs> so we'll see how Tony Stark's tech falls into the wrong hands. But this next story may be falling into the right hands, depending on how you look at it. The Marvel Collect. There's an exclamation point, so you got to make it sound exciting. Uh, by Tops, mobile app is giving fans an early sneak peek at the outfits worn throughout Falcon Winter Soldier. Um, we have pictures here, not only U.S. agent. Uh, you scroll down here, we have a look at Falcon, Winter Soldier, as well as Baron Zemo and uh, U.S. agent. So, Tops Digital is giving fans an early sneak peek into the outfits worn throughout the series via a new digital card collection in the Marvel Collect by Tops mobile app. Hold on. So, there's not actual cards. No, it's digital. There's no physical card. Could you turn that one on? I completely forgot about that one. We're missing a light. But, yeah, no, they're not actual physical shit. Uh, cards. Or shit. Or shit. It's it's not you know, physical I really, shit at all. Well, I really good. feel <laughs> like I'm being gypped. Thank you. I'd sir. like an actual card. No, no, it's all digital. You're gonna lose the card. You're gonna lose the physical card. No, copy. I'm gonna put them uh, behind a picture frame. And they're gonna yeah, put it on a wall. And they're gonna in the hall. And then they're gonna gain, you know, capital. This digital card is gonna be as much as we say it is, though. That's all right. I'm not interested anymore. Yeah. So. <laughs> That's exactly how it goes. It's all right. I'm good. Uh, we can move on. That's me. <laughs> so, what's that trying to find right. my place here? We have uh, each week uh, for four weeks leading up to the premiere of the series, March 19th, Tops will be releasing one collectible in the Falcon Winter Soldier costume art collection on the Marvel Collect by Tops mobile app. They said that a good couple times. They really want you to know the name of the app. So, Tops Digital. I'm not downloading it ever. <laughs> Tops Digital. Upcoming the Falcon Winter Soldier costume we'll art collection. We'll show off the costumes for <laughs> not just of the two titular characters, but also for Baron Zemo as and U.S. agent John F. Walker. Not Johnny Walker. For Johnny Walker is something different. That is liquor. John Walker is which we will USA. gladly take for free. Johnny Walker or John Walker, both. or both? Johnny. Both. You're gonna take. I'll take you. I'll take He's liquor or John. The alcohol. Liquor. I'll take the liquor. Oh, you don't want U.S. agent to help around the house? It would be nice. That would be a little overkill in my house, but it would get <laughs> some kids to be put in line. Or, or, or capped. <laughs> Boom! Either way. What did you do? They weren't following the rules. Okay. It was for the betterment of the country. <laughs> that escalated quickly. Yes, it did. So, each card will be available in a, a pack store for six days throughout the in-app purchase of $5, which will coll give collectors 750 gems, premium currency, 30k coins standard currency and one guaranteed rare costume art card that sounds like loot boxes with extra steps yeah <laughs> that's all the story yeah, just that's seems more grinding now i do appreciate them letting us know like baron zemo i love how he looks here i think baron zemo u.s agent awesome look very comics inspired as well as we see Falcon Winter Soldier right here. Winter Soldier rocking a new look, simplistic. I do want to see both of them because in the comics, multiple people uh, hold the mantle of Captain America. Bucky Barnes dresses full Captain America in the comics and end up, ends up having relationships and all this other shit. Falcon, same thing. So I want to see that at the end of the series to where maybe like either Bucky or you know, Sam end up with the Captain America title and taking that, you know, by taking down Zemo and all that. Now, 
the multiverse is a theme moving forward. So do, do you see the multiverse tapping into this at all? Because this was supposed to come out first and then WandaVision. Obviously, now we're backwards on that. Where Do you see the multiverse in this, old man? Um, I, I still have, um, I still think it's going to be, you know, multiverse connected. So WandaVision is kind of like a moment in time where it, it didn't matter when it was released, as long as it was like in, released in this first new phase. Yeah. Like phase four. Yeah. Um, so as far as the timeline is concerned, I'm not really concerned of that they went with WandaVision first. Right. Um, but uh, I, I wholeheartedly believe that there will be some interconnectability with, with this series to the others. Right. I mean, I definitely, I'm looking forward to it. Kat, are you in, what are you thinking with the Falcon Winter Soldier here? Uh, I'm going to say what I always say. If it's sci-fi fantasy or somebody's wearing a cape, I'm here for it. Fair enough. So That's she is enough. all in. Absolutely. I'm always all in. When am I not all in? <laughs> <laughs> That's another good point. Uh, another good point is... <laughs> With the and person. another good isolation. Yeah, is, oh, with, well, is with Sorry, Mom. the next story, which is Elizabeth Olsen, Wanda herself, teased a WandaVision cameo, quote, on par with Luke Skywalker cameo. Things are about to get explosive in Westview as Wanda Maximoff continues warping reality in WandaVision. Those involved in the show continue to tease plenty of upcoming surprises. One, in one recent interview, Olsen herself suggested there's one character that hasn't been leaked yet, mind you. Is who's it going to be Luke? Is it, Luke going to be it, in the show? It may be. <laughs> They've cast Mark Hamill. How as great, Luke! And you're going to bring the, the damn lightsaber. For. I was going to. I wasn't going. Mark as Hamill's Luke. my fisto. <laughs> my fisto. <laughs> That's a that, title for the podcast right off. there. Because he sorry, was, I had yeah. to. It's, it's Mark Hamill is my was, fisto. Yes, he was Cockknocker in Giant Silent Bob yeah. So. From Cockknocker to My Fisto, Mark Hamill. It's in the same realm. We have a title right here from Cockknocker to My Fisto, The Mark Hamill Journey. That sounds like an autobiography. It does. <laughs> so, from Cockknocker to My Fisto, use the force. From Cox to Fist. <laughs> we the got about uh, we got about 38 minutes in before we men mentioned anything about dicks cat you should be proud <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> those appearances would be on par with the same level as Ru luke skywalker not rook skywalker returning in mandalorian season two rook we rob rook skywalker rook skywalker <laughs> that sounds like Nino a fucking Paul. band, you know, like a No, vocalist. but like seriously, who do you think it is? Magneto. You do? Yeah. I really think it's Magneto. There was um a recent Funko Pop. Uh it was in Spanish, so it's probably like oh, Brazil. Wow. Uh it showed Funko Pops of Timmy and Billy. They're both dressed as Speed and Wiccan. So we're definitely getting them uh probably this week with the Halloween episode. Um, I think it's going to be Magneto, Quicksilver, and Lorna. One of the three, maybe all of them. I think that would be great. Um, with this story, we actually have a bunch of different fan reactions, and they're all pretty much, according to most of the fans, the character who, uh, who could be none other than Magneto, played by either Ian McKellen or Michael Fassbender. I would love to see Ian McKellen. The idea caught enough traction that it propelled X-Men villain to trending topic status on Twitter Tuesday night as well, fans rally around the Well, if they're going by the timeline, the it should be Ian McKellen, Sir Ian McKellen at this point. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Or, I mean, Michael Fassbender put some, you know, Michael touch of gray Fassbender in his hair. Michael Fassbender is amazing, but let's not forget that timeline is in <laughs> the past. Looks which so would good. make him Sir Ian no McKellen's age now. Can tell. It's just for men. So what about what about Professor X though? Because of the whole mind control thing. I think you could just lead off with like ending off with Magneto with this. Now it also happens to fit in line with 
Paul Bettany's previous tease. Who's going to play Magneto? For walking, uh, working alongside a big-time actor. Quote, there's stuff that I can't talk to you about where I get to work with an actor that's going to be a surprise for everybody. The actor previously told black girl nerds, quote, I get to work with an actor that I've been wanting to work with forever, who is some just unbelievable. We have some real fireworks together. That leads me to believe Ian McKellen. Ooh, I like you know what I mean? That. And that also, I know we talked about this in the in the chat, but this also adds a second layer to her whole comment of it being a Luke Skywalker level cameo because yeah. in this case we are looking at Magneto and we could get that Dark Vader, um, mm-hmm. Darth Vader. What the heck is wrong with my mouth today? Shut up. You didn't update your drivers. <laughs> Yeah, it's got to be your drivers. You should go update your drivers. It's, it's always going to end the world uh, if you don't that update. That Vader where he's like, no, I am your father. And we can get yeah. that with Magneto if it works out that way. So I am. Oh I God. also think that it's Magneto, and I'm a Darth super hyped Vader, for it. A Darth Vader, like, you know, Magneto moment there. Like, no wonder I am your father. Your father. That would be so be amazing, great. you know? But then that also means is... Quicksilver, there was two Quicksilvers, and they're just going to have that as there having been two Quicksilvers, and one of them is no longer with us. Multipass. I'm sorry. Multiverse. (laughs) But are they from a different multiverse? Who knows, man? Magneto is that special kind of psychotic. I mean, I'm fine with there being two the twins and then another Quicksilver. Like that, there's no reason why that can't be a thing, too. Now, I mean, I I think that we'll get... Some form of Quicksilver will get. I really hope we get some form of some form of Magneto. You know, something. I would also like to see some form of Sir Ian McKellen. Magneto, mm-hmm. laying bare naked on a bare rug, like what? Mm-hmm. Like just wearing the Magneto helmet, like hey, sure, Wanda, I'm your daddy. Let's this have him with is not Pornhub, Dad. Why not? Why Put on a robe. Comic. <laughs> not the robe just the hat <laughs> <laughs> so we'll move on to another story that doesn't involve hats okay. with no segues <laughs> no segues <laughs> at all <laughs> i was born into segues actually on that note i actually did finally watch uh, the dark knight rises i actually liked it I really fucking You had never it. seen it before? I've never watched it because I didn't like how goofy they made Bane look. Oh. So I was like, I think Fuck people that were movie. a little too harsh really on great. Bane. And Hathaway's Catwoman was great. Yep. Especially with the cat ears going into the goggles. Yeah, just turning that. into the goggles. It was smart. It was so fantastic. What I always appreciated about that trilogy is that he took stuff from comic books and said, okay, how can I do this in a way that's realistic? Like, how can I translate that into real world things and, and it not be costumey or fantastical like with his vehicle and and uh, with Catwoman's I story, outfit. I, I think sometimes people are a little too harsh on uh, on those trilo- that trilogy. <clears throat> I forgot to add in another story, but um, I'll just briefly go through this because I fucked up the stories. Tom Holland says Spider-Man 3 is the most ambitious standalone superhero movie ever made. I forgot to add the story in there, but that's what I was looking for. All right, on to the next story. But That was a good segue. Yeah, no, he was speaking with Variety, and Holland understandably couldn't reveal specifics about it, but he said, I can say that it's one of the most ambitious standalone superhero movies ever made. Now, he also said during this that he has met Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, and he hasn't uh, met, uh, fuck it, what's her name? Mary Jane Watson from uh, the Raimi-verse. Kirsten Dunst. Thank you. I'm having a brain fart. Kirsten Dunst. He said he hasn't met Kirsten, but he has met the others. He said that pretty much alluding that they have nothing to do with the story. That's what I was going with with this. But once again, we have had plenty of people say, I have nothing to do with this, and then pop up on set. So He's we'll doing have a to very see. good job of keeping things hush-hush this time. He's, huh? try- he's trying not to be Mark Ruffalo, <laughs> which well, I got to say. They're also, they're also not, not uh, no one's telling him that if they're being a part of it. So they, <laughs> there may be a lot of that, just like what the Russos like, did with the oh, script Tom. for uh end game. They were like, you may Tom, have your we're, we're only giving you your portion. 
And he doesn't, maybe he doesn't know who he's talking to, so he can say things in public honest, and he doesn't Probably know. It up. And maybe just yeah, keeping sure. him out of the dark, which is, I think, I like, like to No, they that. just keep me in my trailer. <laughs> <laughs> As they should. So you learn to... Shut your mouth. I mean, the payoff is always worth it. Yeah, but well, when they when they can keep it all under wraps. We'll That's see. Why I don't like December seventeenth. I don't want to be spoiled. I want I want to go in there and be shooketh. I want to be spoiled, but I will be spoiled on December seventeenth, twenty twenty one, when it comes out. Um, the actual story we're talking about here is now <laughs> Titans cast their new Robin for season three because, of course, new season, new Robin. Who dis? As reported by Variety and confirmed by the official DC Titans Twitter account, Jay Lucurgo from HBO Max's I May Destroy You pl- will play Tim Drake in Titans Season 3, which is slated to stream on HBO Max following the re- uh, repurposing of the series' original home platform, DC Universe, now on HBO Max. Uh, Variety describes Tim as a streetwise kid who's managed to grow up on the toughest streets without losing his indemnable belief in heroism. His easygoing demeanor is backed by his near genius mind, a natural detective with a perception uh, with perceptive uh, perception of detail far beyond his years. So they're going with a black Tim Drake, a black Robin. I don't think people can confirm that that's so the did, same kid now. So did this Robin grow up with Batman as well? No. Tim Drake actually took the, uh, he stole, he was trying to steal the rims off the Batmobile. And he had the Batmobile up on blocks in the animated series when Batman ca- walked into him. Like, Tim Drake found out that Batman his, was him. Batman. In the comics, during Nightfall, Tim Drake um, saw that Batman, without a Robin, was very destructive and chaotic. <laughs> so yeah. he went on his own personal quest to say, no, like, the, you need a Robin. And that's why you, Batman... You need a conscience, yeah, I guess. Exactly. To where this is okay. fitting in line perfectly with sense. Titans, to where Batman needs somebody to say, yo, dude, you coming on a little thick. Maybe you could stop killing people Maybe for a while. quit the beating. All right, let them breathe. No, they're with, just sleeping without a straw, you know. They just see me and get very tired. That's why the Christopher Nolan Batman just they went to sleep. But now we can really get that realism here, and he's no stranger to you know superheroes and all that stuff. He's a, a solid actor, and I think we can get a really great performance out of him. Uh, DC comic books. Tim Drake was the third character to take on the mantle of Robin, succeeding Dick. Grayson and Jason Todd. Uh, it mean it makes sense that Titans would be introducing Tim in season three. The original Robin, Dick Grayson, is already eschewed his loyalty to Batman to lead the Titans, taking on his new identity of Nightwing in the process. Meanwhile, Dick's first replacement, Todd, Jason Todd, has abandoned the Robin suit and will assume his red hood in Titans season three, no racism attached. It's a red hood. And it's not actually a hood. It's actually kind of like a mask, like a hockey mask. He's more like Jason. Jason Todd. <laughs> Jason. Corny joke. I know. Jason's but, more like Jason. I get it. I yeah. get it. I'm with you. I'm still very confused as to how they're going to get his little confused teen boy character into that role for Wizard. season three. But we'll see. I'm interested to see with the changes that they've made to his ethnicity and um, sounds like his backstory a little bit, Yeah, how they're going to flesh out this character. I, I, I only care about them changing ethnicity or religion, or whatever, when that is an integral part of the characters. I do. Um, I appreciate psyche, the ethnicity so. change in this because it shows Bruce Wayne as more of just picking out a certain character of person. Overall, right, Tim Drake is a black haired white kid that lives in Gotham. He's picking out now, he's picking out, hey, this kid, he's really smart. He's a natural detective. Sounds like he black. picked himself. You know? I mean, the, well, he's, picked himself. the character, yeah. yeah. But he's, this is showing a different. Mixed. I don't know. A different. Yeah, I, I don't mind side. it. I know some people are upset because he's Chinese American in the comics. Sure. 
Um, Whatever. I mean, African American, Chinese American, you're still getting different. Well, what I'm saying, like, unless blend. it is intricately, you know, intertwined with the character themselves, um, I don't mind so much gender ethnicity changes i just i just want a good story so i'm, I'm interested to see where they go with it and, and, and a, why they decided <clears throat> to go the route that they this did. is an interesting point as well tim drake did not have a bad home life his mom and dad loved him no yeah they loved him unconditionally which is so just out of the realm of batman like why are you here well, i don't know batman needs a robin normally superheroes are a lot like stand-up comics you're yeah. standing kind there of trauma. for a reason. Yes. Yeah. Daddy liked like the drink and hit me a few times. Or yeah. Whatever that superhero's problem is. Whatever makes Superman do whatever the hell he does. Whatever and gets his you'll kryptonite be speaking up. to someone yeah, like right. Steve <laughs> on a therapy bed. Maybe. But yeah. somebody who... If you have to see me, you've been hit in the head by a brick. Yes. But somebody else is speaking. I'm very sorry for your loss. And that's the next story. Which is John Favreau. That was a good segue. Still, still as good as I could get, buddy. To wrangle us. <laughs> so John Favreau says the Mandalorian will lead to the sequel trilogy. In a recent yeah, chat with uh, the uh, Writers Guild of America, Favreau seemingly hinted that it may inevitably tie into The Force Awakens in the future, saying. The story unfolded as I wrote it, and Mandalorian inherits a great deal from uh, existing Star Wars stories, and when I write, that context is always a consideration. Uh, it became clear that within the established continuity, certain things were likely to transpire. John Favreau has currently revealed that much like the sequel trilogy, he doesn't have a roadmap for his Star Wars show, meaning the story of Din Djarin could very well end up leading into the age of the resistance in future seasons. I've saw people, even on my own Facebook page, saying retcon the sequel, uh, the sequel trilogy. Um, the sequel trilogy, they said in this article, they had no idea where they were going. And it showed. One thing that didn't show was the Mandalorian. I'm very surprised that John Favreau was like, fuck it, let's see where it goes. Wing it, man. And it worked because he's a fan winging it. And I'm not saying that Rain Johnson or... You think that's uh, what he told Disney? We're just going to wing it. Oh, no, no. He, he fucking fluffed the shit out of that. <laughs> I think he has, like, an overarching sense of where he wants it to go. But yeah. how he gets there might just be, let's see where the road, you yes. know. exactly. where the road takes us. Yep. But he, I, I'm sure he, he knows where he wants it to end up or, or yeah. you know. Well, it's not necessarily, you know, it's not the, the destination, of course, for when he's doing a, a show because he knows what his ending will, like, has a vision of. More than the, likely, the, yeah. The journey that he's bringing us on through this show is just amazing. I mean, the first two seasons were were about him and, and the child, and now there's no child. So now, like, I'm excited. It's almost like a whole new show now. Well, honestly, I have no, yeah, I have no idea. Sleeper. I want to see them. No I want to see him tie in with Bo-Katan and, like, Well, how are they going to the work out that whole dark saber thing? Well, well he's the Mandalorian. He has history. to rally all the Mandalorians. Let's get Mandalore back. I can't imagine too. Bo-Katan being okay with like, okay, you lead. I can't, I can't see that. Queen. So with, with the introduction Queen and of Bo-Katan, you, you now, like, he now understands that, well, maybe like this sect of not showing your face is no longer valid because he felt, you know, connected to the child to show his face and to throw away that line in the sand, just like, yeah, you know, it's. There's he removed so many... his helmet several times in the best interest of that child. Correct. And that says something. So I he's think. willing to he's willing to sacrifice a creed, yeah. to, in which then he realizes that not everyone is like that religious about it, and they can follow the like the ideals of it. So it's just yeah, it's just because he came in contact with Bill Burr, and Bill's like, that ah, just don't sweat it. I think it's Bill Burr that changed his mind, honestly. <laughs> Bill Burr is we just like, he just across. sunk in there, man. It was like, dude, ease up. Come on. Yeah. That was a great arc, too, Bill Burr's. You, yeah. gotta, you have to admit, that was a great, great he arc He had a for better him. arc in two episodes than 
a lot of people have in every show. So yeah. it's just saying something. Just it just shows people who, who, who love and are passionate about something to the level that these yeah. gentlemen are, the kind of stuff they can put out. It's, it's truly, I'm, I'm really excited to see what happens now that we don't have Grogu as the main focus of, of his drive. Now it's yeah. something else. It's This next season is definitely make or break, you know? I think that I trust in Favreau so far, especially with how good the second season went. And I think, especially with the whole mythos of Mandalore, this is where you're going. It's a shattered galaxy for Jedi and Mandalorians. I mean, that's potato, potato, you know, that's the yin to the yang, the Jedi to the, you know, Mandalorian. They're another option, which are still honorable in their own right. So, I would like to say, think rather, that they're going to be more Mandalorian minded going on in season three because they have so many different other spinoff shows that can concentrate on things that they want to do. You know what? He got it. He got an entry arc of, you know, trying to care about something other than himself. And then it touched it in a way to that it, it changed his core. So now you're going to see the new journey with these new values instilled. I was just a cold-hearted bounty hunter until I met that little green frog. <laughs> well, now even at, the um, in the first season when all the Mandalorians <laughs> joined up to help him uh, get off world, that was a really powerful moment for with a bunch of Mandalorians that we had not seen or cared about at all until those minutes where all of a sudden they joined the fight. Be a real that different is, uh, line of view. If you go with like a, if they went like the boys and was like, all right, Mandalorian orgy, like what? We got to make more Mandalorians, <laughs> pure bloods, motherfucker. Go <laughs> like Favreau. I didn't know we were going there. Like, well, Oh yeah. I had to keep that one a secret from Disney. I want to thank Disney for holding on to, <laughs> to star wars that way because i don't think i would want to see that <laughs> no mandalorian orgy in the future okay thank you disney for keeping game of thrones wars. Orgy. here we come we'll save that for x videos and Pornhub <laughs> and wicked yes um the next story well that's where you may be able to find those knockoffs maybe i don't know talk to <laughs> talk to mark rule 34 <laughs> Talk Whoa. to Mark. Maybe he'll get it in the store because <laughs> the gaming DVD exchange over at 23 East State Street Media PA, they're going to have all it's the just latest. Behind the curtain. Uh, they're going to have all the latest <laughs> and retro video games that you will need. If you have a man cave, you want to pop in the old NES console with all the games that you used to play. You have kids. You want to show them this is real gaming. This is the place you want to go right over to here to Game of DVD Exchange. Walk in the, in the shop. Talk to Mark. He'll say... Broski. A lot. And then he'll say... Broski. Hop on over to the $5 wall. And then he'll also let you know that his conspiracy theory that... Chris is secretly growing his hair back. I know it. it it's, it's becoming a problem. <laughs> it's becoming a problem. Just like... Kelly and I are twins. There's no genetic evidence of that, but they both stand by it firm. And, of course, Katarina <laughs> is banned from my store. 100%. But she doesn't live here, so that's not really equating out to anything terrifying to her. So we will go on to the truly terrifying, which, of course, is the next story. Oh, and, of that course, was fancy. isn't it? <laughs> Netflix scraps live action Zelda series and claymation Star Fox project. And you'll never guess who this news came from. Of course, the man that just tortures your soul and educates you in the best way. Adam ruins everything. Host Adam Conover has appeared on a uh, surfer times podcast to discuss capitalism of course, among other subjects. Along the way, he revealed that in 2014, his then-employer, College Humor, was working on an official Star Fox project that, was br uh, that would have brought the game to life using Claymation. Conover claims it was an official Nintendo project created by Shigeru Miyamoto, came to the office to discuss it. He tried to be in... Uh, in office that day but his boss said no fuck you and he still harbors a little uh, hatred for that but 
when the news leaked in 2015 that Netflix was making a Legend of Zelda TV series, Conover says that Nintendo pulled all of its projects. The fact that College Humor was working on a Claymation Star Fox project was particularly interesting, as it sounds like it was similar to Robot Chicken. He also uh, compares it to the ill-fated project uh, to Fantastic Mr. Fox. So regardless, it would have been the first appearance, official adaptation of the hit game, and this marks the first time that the news of the potential project has been revealed. So this live-action Zelda and Star Fox that everybody has been hoping and talking and wanting to happen was done back in 2015. And that would have been the first time a Zelda IP has made it on the small screen since 1992 and 91. Zelda series, meanwhile, made a big splash when the Wall Street Journal broke the news back in 2015. The live-action series at Netflix was in the works. While fans got excited quickly, Nintendo freaked the fuck out, quickly denied rumors. No, we don't want to make money. (laughs) <laughs> and if Conover's claims are true, someone at Netflix leaked the news, and that caused Netflix to cancel all of their adaptations. As a result, they pulled the plug because somebody was flapping their jaw. We don't need you. We got Pokemon Go. I don't I wish- want that money anyway. <laughs> I wish the camera could show, like everyone could see your face right now, because the expression you made when you said that. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. When you're uh, editing this, if yes. you can just, just yeah. grab his face for that uh, one. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't want it. <laughs> hilarious. Now, like Chris was mentioning, The Legend of Zelda was one of a handful of animated projects that Nintendo made before the infamous Super Mario Brothers movie. With an Which e- is a 13 of the episode Mario count. It's a really show. fantastic movie, and you it should is. all go and, and buy multiple copies. The Super Mario Super Show was, it, which is now streaming on Netflix, was on like I think it was on Fox Twenty Nine back in the day in Philly, uh, but um, yeah, yeah, it was it was just syndicated, and it was like every Monday through Thursday was Super Mario Brothers, the uh, and Friday was Legend of Zelda. Well, yeah, Legend of Zelda, yeah. uh, thirteen episode series was airing, Great. started airing back in nineteen eighty nine. And the Super, Mar- uh, you know, the Super Mario Brothers animated series. They had the Super Mario Brothers movie with John Leguizamo. That was great. Which we have I classically mean, always think. said. I have always l- said this bit of information ever since I heard him say it. Is that he was drunk as fuck to get on the scene or on the filming of that movie just to get through it. I think it's probably so bad it's good. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, well, but but yes. that, we'll have to go and role, find it if you can. That role led him then to uh, what Leguizamo led him to, like Romeo and Juliet, and then Spawn. Yeah. That shitty modern day adaptation of Romeo and Juliet that fucking William bad. Shakespeare rolled around in his grave when they made it. It, it wasn't bad with Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes, uh, but like I got to call that awesome a school project, and that Mister. Is worth <laughs> All right, that was mind. great. I got to watch the also, show. It had Leo in it. it could have been that bad. Kind of a time capsule, but not a bad soundtrack. True, Prince. So back in 2018, Castlevania producer Aldi Shankar revealed that he was working on a new animated Zelda series of, for Netflix. Though there haven't been any significant updates on the project since. That same year, it was also revealed that Despicable Me Studio Illumination was working on a CGI Super Mario movie. Of course, those projects are probably already pulled because they said something about it, and Nintendo is a masochist who just wants to chop their penis off and not make money. Think of okay. I'm actually not upset about that. I would like to see a live-action Zelda. Um, and now that they've seen how successful The Witcher was... Mm-hmm they might be able to, you know, put the right amount of money to make it. I want to see an animated Castlevania-style Legend of Zelda is what I want to see now. Oh, my Mm, God, yes. That would be so fantastic. Um, The reason why The Witcher did so well is um, the the Polish. Henry Cavill. We love money. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) True story. 
The Portuguese people love money too, or this Portuguese person. <laughs> I'll show Don't you have much, money. but I love it. <laughs> With two thumbs, I'll show you which Portuguese person loves money. Uh, this person. Um, Sponsor sip available here. Yeah. <laughs> have you got a great product? We'd love to try it and push it. Absolutely. But Down this, your throat but as this, hard as we can. We this, will kill your shit. Yeah, this next product is going down your throat like the next story, which is Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Release date announced with a 4K trailer. So EA released a brand new 4K trailer for Mass Effect Legendary Edition alongside its release date, letting Mass Effect fans know exactly when they can revisit these three classic sci-fi RPGs. Mass Effect Legendary Edition release date is Friday, May 14th on PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, with all three games remastered to support 4K visuals. There will be no PS5 or Xbox Series X version of the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, but those that play the game on next-gen consoles will still have some perks to look forward to. What exactly those next-gen enhancements are have not been specified at this time. But presumably those that play the Mass Effect Legendary Edition on PS5 or Xbox Series X will get an ad ad added performance boost. It never ceases to amaze me just how beautiful and more beautiful these games look as yeah. even in the last year. Like, oh, yeah, they just keep on pushing that bar like further and further. These games look amazing. And this one really needed an updating. It needed an update. It? It yeah. If you have never updated. played it, I'd um, pick Gallery, it up. Have you ever try. played any of the Mass Effect series? <clears throat> I've played all I, of them. I ask. And all of the endings. Remember how I said I stopped playing after City of Heroes went down? <laughs> yeah, no, but this is the thing. Is this There's... legendary edition is a is the one you want to pick up because Mass Effect 1, it caused me to buy an Xbox 360 because of the pure play style, the dialogue options, the choice characteristics of the game. You could replay that game over and over again and it would always be entertaining. And the same thing with Mass Effect 2 and 3. You could replay this as soon as you got to Mass Effect 2 and then you found out, bring over your old saved content and you your choices from the first game transcended over to the second game. This was such a legendary That was so huge. It made so much replayability. Especially to the I story. I wasted so much time. It was game. amazing addition to story mechanics and games that we still have not experienced they still don't again. use enough as it is it, it hasn't been used again that i'm going to take your choices N telltale did it with the walking dead and their you know graphic games they did but nobody else has taken advantage of this simple mechanic that mass effect did especially with rpg games and how you're going on with the future at that time bioware said no we're going to connect all of these and we're going to make this your experience in this sci-fi RPG universe. This is there's, your experience. There's enough moments in, in these games. Like, each one has their, like, Picard Borg moment or yeah. Star Wars, you know, Vader moment. You know, I highly challenge anybody who, if you haven't played the game, you can watch the playthroughs on it and get the yeah. full story. But, I, you know... Just play it at least once. At the time when it came out, it just, it captivated everything that I wanted in a video game. Is the mass of the very first Mass Effect. This 2008 was 2008 was a good year for that because you had a lot of, a yes. lot of video games at that time were, were, I would say, cinematic releases because it took you on that journey. Yes. Like Bioshock, uh, Bioshock, Assassin's Creed, and Mass Effect all came out in the same year. And they all three, all three of them, yes. all the series ha are are uh, alive, full and well, and are spawning better stories now. To bring it to Doctor Who, there are key points in time to where you can't, you know, you can't mess with. Right. This is one of the key points in time in gaming, which is Mass Effect, that series. Regardless of how people were upset about the ending of Mass Effect 3, 
Mass Effect as a series, like I was telling about uh, saying about those features before and just the overall story about this. The whole experience. The whole experience. The journey. Was life changing for the video game industry, for RPG mechanics, for actual choices in gaming. These guys were the first people to fucking do that. Yeah. They were the first people yeah. to say, no, your choice and your experience is going to be different than your experience, and that is an attractive mechanic now. There was, there was another now. game who did that as well. The, um, oh, it was a crime game where you, how you solve. Crime Streets of LA. Yeah. Yes. And there was the New York one that gave people seizures. Yes. If you yeah, had you a had seizure disorder <laughs> and you played it, you keep you bringing would get that a one seizure. Up. Yes, that's why I re- that's why I remember it. Like, so for all you still playing solution, Streets of so New York, watch made, out for the seizures. It made the news here in Philadelphia back in the day when it went live, <laughs> and uh, so one girl had a seizure, and her mother's plan was, well, she should just play it less than four hours. So we're going. I told her to play it for three and a half hours, and that should be good okay. as a solution. So re- regardless of which platform players use the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, the content will be the same. This includes the original Mass Effect trilogy of games along with over 40 pieces of DLC besides the substantial story DLC that was released for the original Mass Effect games. Back in the day, this DLC includes DLC weapons, armor, and other goodies as well. However, the Pinnacle Station DLC won't be available Due to corrupted source code. I find that to be a cop out. They could have included. I just think that you want the, them to corrupted source the, code is them saying fuck that. That was too much work. Be yeah. happy we did this. Uh huh. And if you go to the next story, you'll see the comparison video of Mass Effect original to the Mass Effect 4K. Yeah. Um. And it is popping up right below, right there. Um, and it's overall, it's, you know, the the interface, the overall look of it. If you're looking at the bottom screen, that's the legendary. The top of the screen is the original. It's It looks great. And mm-hmm. a lot more vivid lighting-wise, because that's one of the newer innovations in graphical gaming, that and the light. The water honestly looks about the same. But they did a lot with the lighting, making it lighten up. It was very, I didn't, never realized how dark of a game that was. TVs, well, TVs were crap back then. Well, that's true. That's true. We were only struggling to get the 720p at the time, so that tells you something. Back in my day, we were happy with 720p. In fact, at the time, I had a TV that was so bad, I didn't know. It just showed everything in green until someone pointed it out. I had to throw it away at that point. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't notice. One thing I didn't notice is this next story until I looked into it. Thank you. That was a good segue. The day before MMO is The Last of Us meets The Division. And there's a trailer below. Um, The Last Division? Developer... Fantastic, and it's spelled F N T A S T I C. Has I know, I know. It's almost an aneurysm in your brain when you hear that spelled out. But it has revealed a brand new MMO the day before, which is a cross between The Last of Us and The Division. Up until now, Fantastic has made two other games, which were much smaller in scope and the scale by comparison uh its first game radiant ones released in 2018 and was a small story driven indie game it this received pretty solid funny. reviews across the board and the studio's second game wild 8 received weaker though still decent reviews wild 8 is yet another single player game which is focused on eight plane crash uh survivors trying to stay alive in a wintry environment. Both games were stylistic and used a fixed camera angle like the old uh, Resident Evil games. So that is nothing like this trailer we're seeing right here. Yeah, no, this looks really good. 
that's not a fixed camera. It's very crisp looking. It's stylistic. The water, even it's in great. The, the water in the water. It looks. Yeah, it's oh my god. You know, and you look at this, and sky looks good. With the, the day before, Fantastic is taking things to the next level, and it really shows it here. The studio is trying its hand at an open world MMO set during a zombie apocalypse. Of course, it's basically combining The Last of Us with the gameplay of The Division, uh, oh. with a few new twists like vehicles in the gameplay de- uh, demo here. Fantastic oh, shares a glimpse store. at what <laughs> to expect from the new looting stores. I'm sold. <laughs> Take my money now. <laughs> what to expect from this new IP? Two players split up in search for fuel for the car in the city where they hear a colony of survivors. Things quickly go south, uh, though, as m- the main player gets ambushed by other players and their battle uh, attracts the attention of the undead. The player then scrambles through the snow and into an elevator of skyscraper. Uh, where he finds his dead partner. It looks like it'll be an incredibly compelling experience as players must manage ammo, inventory, clothing, and possibly hunger and thirst. Weather also appears to play a factor. In those shelves. You know, they got like, you know, I see a yam. You know, you got a pineapple in there. No, it's w- yam no, on the floor. I want him to find a fedora Ash so he can yam. switch hats. <laughs> so... Uh, possibly weakening, uh, the weather will possibly weaken the health or stamina of the player a, a lot like, uh, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2, which is why you would want to have that in, you know, real warm. Watch when Matt, Matt equips the fedora, it says minus five for accuracy. <laughs> <laughs> that is all right. I, I, I'll Plus go with 10 that for one. style. Yes. <laughs> My style is through the charts with that fedora on, but. Um, Ten for charisma, which is useless in a zombie <laughs> apocalypse. You never yeah. know. But I'll be charismatic to the you zombies. You never know what a zombie's kink is. Have they ever even explored that? Well, you know, a lot of zombies. Oh, Perk maybe yeah. smolder. <laughs> <laughs> What remains unclear is if the day before can actually match these standards as its team, uh, the team size hasn't been specified. And there's no disclosure saying the gameplay in the video isn't real. So one would hope that whoa, whoa, it's, whoa, it is authentic and it's not just conceptual. Did you say the gameplay is not real? What's it? Imaginary? There's no disclosure saying that it is real. This could just be a cinematic, a extremely detailed cinematic, a la e, like what they showed with games that have not done no, I don't think what so. they promised. Cyberpunk. Ugh, excuse me. I have a cold. Twenty-seven-seven. Yeah. Um. There's so that being that there is no disclosure. It does have some people cautiously optimistic, especially well, with this current state of the video game industry. Cyberpunk goes to show you if you disappoint us, and if you disappoint some people enough, they will sue you. Look, man. Don't fuck with the internet and don't fuck with Reddit. I think that's what current the day before has told us. Coming soon. GameStop will to a Reddit board near you. <laughs> so twenty one's uh, big game with twenty and twenty one dollars free. Oh, Bet now you- up. Yeah, no, they're really going hard on those uh commercials. I there. have never heard of this thing. This so thing. one thing you that you have heard of well that's Gary's mod. No, I haven't. Uh, the successor, Sandbox, gives us a progress update here to where you can play some of the videos here. Uh, Sandbox, or s and Box, is the heir apparent to Face Punch Studios' Gary's Mod. The first started hearing, uh, we first started hearing about the game again last year, thanks to a meme, meme tweet from Gary Newman. But since then, it's gotten a proper website with the what real the development hell updates. Is this? This is Sandbox. Did he I'm just, still stuck did, on Mimi. <laughs> did he just do that? A Mimi tweet. He said a Mimi. Yeah, a Mimi tweet. <laughs> meme. A Mimi tweet. It says meme, but with a Y, a dash Y. So that's Mimi. Mimi. <laughs> so we've got a proper website here with real development updates as the development update goes on quite in depth. Mm-hmm. 
explaining the progress on ragdolls, which was the first video he was showing, and various sandbox tools like wheels and thrusters, mm-hmm. chat boxes, uh, pretty, uh, yeah, pretty water, breakables, and perhaps the most impressive, the sun. The sun. Oh, yeah. This looks like a creepy no thank you from me. Gary's mod You know, this reminds me of um, Little Big World. Yes, exactly right. Gary's mod was like uh, Attack on Titans, the anime, got a game because enough people in Gary's mod made it. They made a game around Attack on Titan and enough people were playing it to show that a lot of people were doing this once again this is where the modding community is really going to launch off once they get this new gary's mod out there with these new physics and lighting sources and everything that we have now in normal gaming once we get sandbox out there for what the fuck was that that? was the (laughs) that was the sound was not turned off on that (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's the sound <laughs> of an engine. I, I, Modern I, community, I, I would like to ask for many thick boy mods. There you go. This month, I've started working on an extensive time of day system, Newman says in an update. He goes on to detail the graphical, uh, geographical changes that light, uh, no, the graphical changes that the lighting system allows, not geographical changes. That lighting system. Damn. Is Was that outside? <laughs> yeah, we yeah. well, we live right down the road from Chester, so <laughs> <laughs> he goes on to detail the uh, graphical changes that the lighting system allows, fires. like yeah. matching shadows on both <laughs> the player model and what's in the player's hand. There are a lot of great little videos in there from the ragdolls, how the ragdolls work to how things are affected by physics and breaking, like the shooting of the balloons. This is someone's job. Also, emojis in chat. Okay? You can now have emojis in chat. That's huge. What are they doing? Yeah. So this is the biggest sandbox to come in the future. You can make whatever you want. I have seen Star Wars mods on Gary's mod. I have seen, you know, a bunch of different stuff that pop up on this thing to where it's fans who want to make something. This is your platform. This is what this is your mecca. You know, this is where you're gonna go to get all of your next gen mods that everybody's gonna be playing easily and accessibly. That's the big thing. This is making mods very accessible to where you don't have to download a file. Add it into the game. Hope that you added it into the right folder. This is Gary's mod, baby. You just hop in there, pick a server, and go and play. Another thing that you're going to want to play. So you're just telling people to play on your server. Yeah. Uh, Play hard on the server. Maybe we get a Pure Jangers and Wallhanger server on Sandbox. I don't know. We'll have to see how it comes in the future. We got... We're always going to be looking at you know where we're going with this with this one this because is this it's is impressive. Some nice water. It's really, really great water. You I know, mean, it could, I've seen better water. That's some high quality H two O water. Bobby Boucher will be very proud of that water. So, a lot of great things coming from Gary's mod. Like the next story, a lot of great things coming and in mod form. So, original Castlevania game is recreated as a Doom-style first-person shooter. Ah. Yeah, talented developer and Doom connoisseur Betani has released a mod that turns the original Castlevania into a first-person vampire bloodbath. Betani's mod, titled Castlevania Simon's Destiny, reinvents Konami's believe, uh, beloved franchise and gives a fan chan- uh, fans a chance to defeat Dracula from an entirely new perspective. Oh, I love it. He's going to get sued out the ass, but I love it. <laughs> Originally <laughs> released in He's 2017. He's going to know no end to hurt, but yeah. I love it. It's, the, it's great. Oh, yeah. Originally released in 2017, Castlevania Simon's Destiny is a non-profit. There you go. Ah, that's a, the loophole. Doom fan game. That's the other one. Ah, uh-huh. that 
utilizes the popular GZ Doom port. Banty recreated every level from the original NES Classic Castlevania and released it, released it as a standalone game. Players swap Doom's you could usual predict the future. predicting the future. <laughs> even Link was free. Even Link was freaked out by that app. He was like, oh, "I don't like the future. Get away." Um, Doom's usual assortment of ballistic weaponry for Simon Balmont's famous whip, in order to defeat Dracula's army of the night. According to Banty, the game is a love letter to Konami's legendary franchise and is available to download for free of charge. Everywhere. But that's what I really like about this, man. You have a three, a first person 3D Castlevania, like with you an know. engine that you know, so you know how the mechanics work. Yeah, and it's the levels you know. So if you're an original Simon's Quest Castlevania fan, for free, what else are you doing with your life? You know. Despite the release, uh, releasing over 30 years later, Castlevania Simon's Destiny captures uh, all of the charm and danger of the original Castlevania. Players dispatch waves of familiar enemies from the relentless undead to elusive vampire bats with all the assortment of lethal gear. There's a plethora of holy water vials to toss and axes to heave and candlesticks to destroy as Simon ascends the castle. So for those that would like to check out this mod for free, hop over to Game Rant, and in the article, they have the link, which is B-A-T-A-N-D-Y dot I-T-C-H dot I-O backslash S-I-M-O-N-S-D-E-S-T-I-N-E, and you will get that mod for free. And 32 points in Scrabble. Yes. <laughs> More if you get it on a double, a double word. <laughs> triple word score. Elon's getting a triple word score on this one because Elon Musk hopes to make his monkeys, giggity, play with Pong with their mind. He could, he oh, I, I thought game? Amazon got wind of this and they were they said they're, they're mm -hmm. releasing Skyrim again. <laughs> they're going to let the monkeys play Skyrim <sighs> with their mind? So Elon claims one of his companies, and Dude, he claims they love ET. ET e. is the monkey's yeah. favorite game. They love it. They can't get enough of it. Well, it's similar. Turns out they're they're just monkeys. Pixelated graphically, it does kind of look more similar to the monkeys. So maybe they just see the, themselves in the main protagonist. <laughs> that could um, be possible. You might want to retract that statement because PETA will be involved if they're if they have to play ET. <laughs> PETA Griffin. PETA, <laughs> not PETA. That's right, Peta. Elon's got lawyers. I love that yeah, family What is he actually joke. doing? No so, life. jokes aside, but Elon's company has implanted a device into a monkey's brain and hopes to make it play Mind Pong Giggity. I don't know why that sounds dirty, but it really sounds dirty. Mind Pong? Not just you. Okay, cool. <laughs> with another cyber monkey. So he wants a monkey to play cyber pong, cyber mind pong with another cyborg monkey. Okay, now it does sound sexual. <laughs> the Russians did this. The billionaire who It's owns... not that hard. The Russians did it. <laughs> the Russians <laughs> did a head transplant on dogs. Yeah. They got really good at it. I bet, because you could do anything over there. What do you think the other the, the dog did when they woke up? Bark. Tried to shake that stupid dog off its back. There you go. I mean, what else would you do when there's a you wake up and there's a head on your back? I mean. So the billionaire who owns a variety of science-based companies discussed the augmented monkey in a speech that? hosted on I a private social the app. Plot of Stranger Things away. Yeah, Clubhouse. <laughs> according, I've never seen that. According to Sky News, I'm, I'll get him on that. He, <laughs> he definitely needs to see Stranger Things. Um, during the talk. He revealed his brain machine interface company, Neuralink, has a monkey with a wireless implant in their skull with tiny wires. Neuralink is using the monkey as a test subject for its technology with uh, something it previously did with two pigs. 
ultimate aim of the company is to create a brain computer interface with current trials focused on potentially using the technology to treat people with brain and spinal injuries. Oh, As great. part of these tests, Musk wants to make the monkey play video games in its own mind. One of the things we're trying to figure out is whether we can have the monkeys playing mind pong with each other, he said. That would be co pretty cool. If he likes a little just alone and Sandra Bullock and De Demolition Man. Yeah, that would <laughs> be pretty cool if we could get the monkeys to play you know, pong in the mind with the other monkeys. <laughs> Um, the device itself is made up of more than 3,000 electrodes that are capable of monitoring around uh, 1,000 neurons. This is attached to threads slimmer than a hair, the so-called tiny wires Musk spoke about. Um, animal welfare within the realm of science is naturally a concern for many groups, especially when you're talking about poking wires into monkeys' brains. Musk claims that you can't see where the implant is, and he's a happy monkey. Um, he claims that he's a. <laughs> he claims the inspector from the U.S. Department of Agriculture said that the Neuralink Laboratory was the nicest monkey facility he has ever examined. That that's nice to know. It's nice to know. If the just, nicest, Jordan's not going to accept that alley oop and slam dunk it, okay? No, but he's just trying to get monkeys <clears throat> into video games. Good lord, I'm getting kicked. Who I is this guy? He's Look, acting like a monkey. He is Elon. An we know you're watching, but calm down, man. I'm getting my ass kicked by twelve year olds. I don't need it to get kicked by fucking monkeys too. All right? <laughs> Do you yeah, never want you me imagine, to play fucking games could again? You imagine the verbal spatter and rage quit from a monkey. Oh my god! Get that monkey on cigarettes. He needs to calm down. Can you imagine somebody playing and not realizing it's a monkey, so he thinks that he's legitimately, like, shit-talking him? Oh, my God. This guy is just rage. constantly jumping up and down and throwing <laughs> shit at me. What the fuck is his problem? Literally. Oh, no, that's, a, that's a monkey, and he's really throwing shit. We called that a hand grenade there, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, gosh. I mean, would you want This is that? my Semtex, and you're going to like it. <laughs> But this How is the quickly point I here. devolve when I'm hanging out with you guys. Would you want that as your game controller? Like, you don't want something we in your hand? Centered. You don't want your body as the controller, a la the Connect. Do you want... Just a couple wires going out of the top of my head? Yeah. Well, no. I think... The, that would can't totally for myself. free me up for multitasking. Well, no, you can't see the wires. That, the wires are in your say. head. I don't think you'll be able to multitask if it's directly put into your brain that I, i'd never get I it know. i gotta be honest i'd never get any work done oh my god yeah you just were you paying there. attention to that meeting uh -huh. i'm sorry i was just playing skyrim i'm sorry I was, I was, I was <laughs> but that's what i'm saying like you're gonna be completely <laughs> yeah. consumed by playing that game like your yeah. brain won't know yeah i will how to yeah. do anything yeah, else. i will over, uh -huh. yeah overstimulate yeah. someone to that to to that degree because then you got somebody like the old man who has like oh no i actually stream my computer at home to my front lens and my glasses and then i use my Neuralink to play the games and i'm uh, and it's actually just running at my house so now whenever i'm talking to you i may be listening i may be playing you know overwatch i don't know <laughs> you're the guy i would see figuring that out I would completely see you figuring that out and be but like, imagine the well, no, actually, this is what you need to do. And then with the Neuralink, you just uh, download this app and then, you know, you'll get this access and then you can play games wherever you are ever. Remote desktop allows you to USB connect your devices. So just saying. So you already figured it out. Okay. I knew I didn't yeah. have to give you much time. <laughs> uh, I, there I reset it. <laughs> So we're going to reset over here because we got our, we're finally at the end of the stories and we're back at our home Switch page. Switch your RF units back to aux. Or which TV. could only mean the thought experiment, which is the end of the podcast, the end segment, which I'm bringing it retro all the way back to the beginning of the Triforce when we started doing all of this end segment craziness. We had a segment called Versus. And tonight... Ultimate billionaire superhero, Tony Stark versus Batman. 
discuss. So, obviously, Tony Stark, Iron Man, you think, oh, he's more technologically inclined than Batman. Batman, not only being a detective trained by, uh, trained by the League of Assassins, he also has his own gadgets, but just relies more on himself to where Tony relies more on his technology, I feel. So where that's where the real difference in these two superheroes really form. Um, so I can say Batman uses his technology as an extension of himself, whereas Tony Stark uses the technology as a crutch. Yes, 100%. I'm also going to go um, with Bruce Wayne as the winner here because I think that another thing that Tony Stark has working against him is his, is his arrogance. He always yeah. assumes he's the smartest man in the room. His narcissism, yeah. Yeah, um, and that I think would ultimately be his downfall, has been his downfall in the past, and he doesn't seem to, to learn from that. Well, yeah, even well, if you look time, at the, the MCU only time when he does learn is when, he's, when he realizes that Oh, I just made an ass of myself, and now I'm going to do. I done fucked up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I do think that, and as someone who thinks that people say Batman will win against people he really has no business winning against, in this case, I will give it to him. No, I really, I'm, I'm siding along with Batman too because, not saying this is a bad point, but Tony was a little bit of an alcoholic, and by a little bit, I mean a lot. He's not really. The incognito type? He isn't. He yeah. made his he suit flies red around. and yellow. Well, he also said, I am Iron Man and gave his address on live TV to the entire planet. I live so. in the big circular house on the hill. It's like a bullseye, really. He's like, hey, Would come you shoot my house. And he does a Pikachu no. face when somebody does blow up his look, house. Look, 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 look. He moved. <laughs> He, he moved. Really had he, had to. Free. He, he moved. And then <laughs> he moved he to a mansion no in the middle of New York, which is equally inconspicuous when it's the tallest fucking building there. With a balcony that he flies off of. Yeah. But if he didn't reveal Batman his Batman would have hero, him figured out before the they even met. But if Tony didn't have, if he still had that in a uh, superhero secret. Oh, to where he hid his identity, then he wouldn't be able to have that sweet pad that he sold off and now lives in a cabin in the woods before he died. But really, threw even some when sunshine, you, I don't know if that way. counts as a cabin. When you look at <laughs> when you look at um, you know comics, made of wood. animated versions, and even live action versions of the character, I still think. Hey, Mark Gervais is here. Hey, That's what Mark. I think. Um, I still think that What's up, Mark? it would be a close battle, <laughs> but I think that uh, even I Mark. I someone had to say it. I'm broski. sorry. Yes. Broski. Yes. The broskies are flying. Bro broski. Because I think that while Batman doesn't have that armor, it's also because he feels he doesn't need it because he's a Billy badass. Yeah. Tony Stark needs that uh, false sense of security of the Iron oh, Man yeah. armor, and Tony Stark wasn't trained by a literally. This is their name, the League of Assassins. Yeah, he was trained by no assassins. All fair. So I think all fair points. Batman would cut out his tongue, shove it up his ass, and then slit his throat. I really, uh, maybe not in that order, but if he really wanted to, unless he yelled, Tony out can get on your nerves. All right, took, I feel like a... that's where it would go. It took a loss of biblical proportions for Tony to swallow his pride. And that Giggity. just tells you things. So here's what Batman would really do. He'd do a hostile takeover of his company, and now you work for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, that's probably I bought him. That's how how I beat him. I no, just I bought, bought him. your company. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's that's <sighs> Yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair. And you paid for it with stock options. Not future state Batman. Future state Batman's broke. So this would have oh, to be in like current time Batman to where he still ha he's still filth filthy rich tons of money. Yeah. 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 But Tony Stark, you know, he, he eventually dies. So I think Batman ultimately just has the one up on him. Okay. So I guess ultimately that's a, a huge bombshell for this versus that. Not to course, mention girlfriend to girlfriend. 
Oh my god. Batman's girlfriends are so much better than Tony. I mean, look, Pepper's nice, but Catwoman, Talia Al Ghul, come on, right there. Diana of Themyscira. Well, that's true too. He did hit that. Um, yeah, yeah, no. So uh, I really, I, I love the the thought of this, and I think that ultimately Batman would win. Mark says, "Is that a uh, insider trading? Or I'm buying that for a dollar. <laughs> I'll buy that for a dollar." <laughs> <laughs> So Batman ultimately wins because he's well, Batman. He's Batman. Yeah, of course he's going to win versus. How did you Put think that this on Wall Street Reddit win? and and get that going on Robin Hood? Batman is behind Batman. <laughs> that's that's the ultimate message of this versus. But we also end off the podcast the same way, which is with the thank yous. We want to thank you, Mark Gervais, John Walsh, Margaret Greer, Rory Carroll, Teddy Schools for all likes and subscribe and subscribes and supporting us um we want you to hop on over here because next week we are going to have a very special hopefully a very special video uh ad segment that i'm going to be doing um i'm going to debut it next week get it all together now you have to do it i do I'm calling yeah, myself committed. out. I'm putting I'm putting it out Congratulations, there. Congratulations. Right? You played yourself. I did play myself, and now <laughs> it's put up or shut up. There's going to be an ad segment and not my colorful ad segment for Mark the Game pumped. of TV exchange. Mark's pumped. I'm pumped, too. And that's because we're going to have our first official commercial during the Triforce podcast next week, and it's going to be the Game DVD exchange. You're going to hear the words from Mark's own face hole. Face hole, and it's going on Super Bowl ad. No, <laughs> <laughs> we put out an Dirty ad on Sunday. You're gonna see the commercial. It is uh-huh. really, really, really busy. The pressure. <laughs> You'll see me on lug nuts, completely white as a ghost, because I haven't <laughs> slept or ate or even had any nutrition. <laughs> but that's what we got Probably going on. We got a lot of great stuff going but he on. Did edit it. And uh, we'll obviously be going, uh, doing Mark some Mark says there. his butthole <laughs> will not be on the commercial. Your face hole, not your butthole, your face hole. Yeah, your butthole is when you were on your the podcast. Face hole, <laughs> sir. Your, butthole, your butthole, your butthole is on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, your butthole goes on the podcast. Your face hole goes on the advertisement, sir. Correct, correct. That is the way of things. I have spoken. This is the way. This is the way. (laughs) (laughs) And, of course, the way we always end it off is, I'm Matthew Bugrell, the Matt Man. In the Projanger box, we have Katerina Thermoscara, Wonder Cat. We have Christopher Bristow, the old man. (laughs) Earlier, we had Kelly Collins, our Iron Kelly. We always have our omnipotent presence that is our producer, big brother, Stephen Bucarell. And, of course, as Link Diablo always knows... It's time. We love you. We miss you. We want to see you next week. As always, gang, game on, Wall Jangers. Bye bye. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, no. I can't tell. I I can't push the button. I can't tell. It's it's just such a good time. I don't want to do it. All right, I'm I'm ending. All right, we're done. And the program. Shoot the glass. We're doing it live. Play on the tangers. That was a good segue. <laughs> See, clearly it's just it's not just me having issues right now. I really cannot form <sighs> words. I who can. This is gonna be and Matt has a hard time Englishing and adulting <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> I'm going okay. for a world Both record. Both of those at the same time are very complicated. Yes, and I'm I'm so going nice. for a world record. Almost like a world record of segues, like starting this show. Hey, and you're love, not green anymore. Although, as I, lo- as I look at it, I do love the last comment that Mark says. It's dot, dot, dot. <laughs> I'm so <She's> banned. banned. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. I love oh, that. shit. Hilarious. <laughs> I love that because you know if you walked into his store he wouldn't say get out. He'd probably walk up and give you a I hug. would I would honestly I would like 
I would try to get there before it opened, but while he was in the store and just yeah. stand at the glass and like, you know. <laughs> just look at him. <laughs> says, my band. So I would probably knock on the window and be like, do you have any PS5s? <laughs> Broski. <laughs> hey, Broski, you got any PS5s? Scratching my neck. <laughs> oh, God, she would say, Broski. You got any PS5s? <laughs> He'd go back and hide behind the counter. When's your next trip down Maryland? Um, usually I go down for spring break with the kids um, for a couple of days and then do something on the way back. So the, you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> well, yeah. So you're saying it really chance. depends on the state of the world because yes. like what I would yeah. do is I would go down to Maryland and spend half of spring break down there with my parents. And, and, but then on the way back, I would either do like six flags. And, and there was a time we went to, um, drug running Sesame place. How right. far are you guys from Sesame? Place? <laughs> right. Uh, not, we're not drug running. Away. They're so similar. Okay, so like, in so yeah. many ways. There's yeah. a, there's a mall right there that we went and did some stuff there too. And then there was a time that we went to Legoland, which is also in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, right? Is it in Philly? You go to oh, a lot of fun places. It's in a mall, but it's a Lego thing. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. there's, oh. there's stores. A Lego no, it store. was like an interactive <laughs> Lego stores. museum or Lego play Playland or something like that. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. I'll have to look at that. that they had to buy, like, passport that. passes to get into, and you had to choose a time. And Yeah, I went to, I went to those in Boston, actually. Okay. Um, so there was passport. one in, in Pennsylvania that I went to with my sister. I think it was in Philadelphia right outside. You need a passport to go to Boston? For no, it's, Lego a, it's a Lego passport. It's a crazy place. A Lego man. passport. Oh, wow. That's you know what I'm talking real, about, right? So I don't yes, have I do. to call the State Department. Do you have to have like two forms of identification just... to get that passport into Legoland? <laughs> Hello, like, State yeah. Department. I'd like to go to Why Legoland. No, Why is it. Legoland more, uh, you know, controlled uh, with their immigration than like Narnia, <laughs> Fillory, like any other imaginary land? They just let whoever the fuck they want in the door. Legoland, it was in uh, like, no, Plymouth no, 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 Meeting, no. Pennsylvania, the Legoland oh, yeah. Discovery Center. Oh, yes. Yes. okay. That's uh, right outside of Conchalk. Yeah. Okay, so that's where we were. So, you know, it just depends on what the state of the, the country is at that point God, with that the pandemic crackle. and what's open and and what Conchalk. have you. Oh, God. I really do want to try to do something because this is my last opportunity with my son. Um, today he told the recruiter that he is he's good to go. And for joining the Navy. which bridge? Uh, Navy. Okay. Where? Joining the Navy. Oh, okay. he'll be fine. He's in the Navy. Yeah. I am. You know, <coughs> I, I have nothing against him joining the military. I think it's great. It's a great opportunity for him. But as pay for um, school. Yeah. As the mother of a an openly gay son, it makes me a little nervous because <laughs> I know that not everybody in the military has a great mentality. Yeah, but but you're not going to like, the world in general. Tell him to you're not going learn jujitsu, and he'll be fine. Oh yeah. Well, Learned he. I told them I didn't care if he chose between Navy and Air Force. To please, just not Army or Marines. Yeah, I was about to say you're not going in like Army or Marines. You're going in like no, Air, I, Force, I said, Navy, Air Force, Navy. Air Force or Navy. I said please. I feel Army that's a little Marines, bit more so. of an accepting environment. You know. I uh, agree. I agree. That was that was my thing. For not him. to say that you know people in the I know Army and in the high school that was still Marines in the won't Air be Force. like that. I won't call him a friend. He's more of a jackass. Okay. But yeah, but no, that's there, yeah. Being a jackass. Well, that makes sense. But <laughs> I feel that'd be a little bit more of an accepting environment there. That's great. Yeah, stuff. that's like you know, just him being in the military, even if he wasn't gay. Of course, as a mother, I would worry because you know, well, wars yeah, happen, shit happens. Do. Um, but the fact that not only is he gay, but he is an openly gay. Um, and he's telepathic. He can move things with his mind. Make right, that's telekinesis. Oh, that's tele telepathic. Right. He could right. read minds. Oh, I get so that. It does make me nervous, but it's what he wants to do, and I fully support him in whatever he wants to do. And we I'm don't superpower shame does around he have here, a, sir. Does he have a plan? I just don't like, know is he what they're going to do. The, the the training and the tour, and then putting his time, and then well, like, his is he getting a signing bonus? Transition to like a you know a college or like his long term goal is to um, get a degree in um, psychology and okay. work as a therapist with 
enlisted or veterans. Okay. Um, especially with P- focus on PTSD and also yeah. LGBTQ issues within, oh, within the military. The government will pay for ev- oh. right, And that's oh, one yeah. of the draws for him to go there. But this is something that going in, he's looking to make a full on career out of. But honestly, yeah. it, it all really just depends on how these first four years go. Yeah. Um, ex of mine, her brother went up. Uh, it was a Navy school. Oh, I think it was up by you in like Rhode Island or Massachusetts or something like Massachusetts. that. Massachusetts. Yes. He went up there for the equivalent of like redshirting because he played Navy football. And right. then he went down to Annapolis and everything. I got to see a couple games and everything. That was yeah, because awesome. he's going to be 17 when he graduates, his father and I have to sign off on it. And mm-hmm. then he would be going up to Massachusetts for um, boot camp. Basically. It's fucking cold up there. I remember uh, Jake, he was, he was telling us one time, it was snowing hey, up cookie. there. They're literally, you're that campus is like right by the waterfront so you get all the weather and it was just bitterly cold he fucking hated it's, it's it there, a nasty right? place. yeah the recruiter was so we we're like yeah we can get him up there in two weeks i'm like he's got to finish high school buddy just sign the papers mom we'll get him up there oh them. yeah they are they yeah. are especially and he took like the mini ads, like the pre ass fab that they take when they yeah. the mm-hmm. recruiter and he only got one wrong on the whole test so awesome yeah he's been um, for, for a good while yeah I, and, and you know even if he just does the four years um yeah. he still qualifies for the gi bill and, yep. and he'll mm-hmm. still be well taken care of and and that again mm-hmm. is part of the reason why he wants to go that route yeah um uh, but what at the same know? time it scares the shit out I, I <laughs> understandably I, you know i highly commend him because that you know, a lot of people his age don't even have like it's a amazing. path decided yeah point, so. you know 100 percent. i think you know, he, there's a he was base well. in kansas he surprised me because before his junior year if you asked him what he wanted to be or what you know what his future goals were it the answer changed with every time you questioned him like he was all over the place and i think once he settled on um i'm glad that he went to this high school it's a career academy so there's like four strands mm-hmm. and then you do the for all four strands for freshman year and then you choose the strand that you want and then you stick with that strand for the next three years so once he did all four and he chose human services which was you know um therapy uh, social work, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. It really seemed to like, yeah. And then of course he, you know, we have, we're a military family. Um, so he's seen, you know, the after effects of being in mm-hmm. the military and also the after effects of being in the military while being LGBTQ. Um, yeah. So once he, he settled into that, it, it really focused him and and i feel for these kids because you know at 18 you don't always you don't know, know what you want to do like my daughter oh, has yeah. been saying that she wanted to be a veterinarian since she was four and then when she turned like i 10, wanted to she be was like no i want to be a biologist because she doesn't want to um at one point in she doesn't my wanna childhood be like putting animal animals down <laughs> in one point in my childhood big brother had me convinced that i wanted to be a trash man yeah. He was like, dude, you make so much money. Hey, there's no shame money. in that. That's a You make job. so much money. You ride yeah. around on the back also, of a truck. I'm like, yeah. At the same point I'm being in a trash time, man. He wanted to be a Ghostbuster, an yep. astronaut, an actor. <laughs> baseball player. Baseball, baseball uh, player. Everything. A baseball my player. My mom, I played, you know, Little League ball. And, and my she mom was had all a, in. An and ongoing man. bet. She said, Me. if you hit the ball. I will give you a dollar. She made me go to every one of his games. And I did not make one dollar. Uh-huh. <laughs> every no, time I made me, it on base, um, I was walked. For me, it took until and it was a little was boring when I actually just went to school, got my degree, and then, you know. You know I still don't know what I want to be when I grow up. I don't want to grow up. I'm, I'm just I'm a Toys R Us kid. I am still That's being paid for my job. Me too. Yeah, I'm, I work um, my for daughter them. realized she likes the science of animals more than she likes the, 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 I, the I don't think she doesn't like animals she <laughs> likes animals she likes animals she actually wants to she already wants to apprentice at the zoo but she has to be um 16 before she can do that she's so she's she likes a marine scooping. biologist because then she can go snorkeling we've talked about her yeah. being marine biology because that's what her uncle went to school for but he never finished so mm. i thought that was interesting that she went the biology route but once she realized that as a veterinarian 
a vast majority of your job is putting animals down. Oh yeah, yeah. She was oh like, yeah. She's you, like, you I can't. Become a vet she's like, I don't want to do that. Like, I don't want to do that. Some marine biology is looking up. <laughs> I think uh, your it's looking son, up now. Okay, your son choosing the path will give him a definitely unique perspective to kind of facilitate the needs and assistance. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And also, like, this is an opportunity for him to see the world. Um, yeah to travel, to meet people from all walks of life and opportunities that he's not going to get if he decides to go to a, like a standard four year and do the same type of work, you know, yeah. to see the world on someone else's yeah. dime. Too. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. My grandfather, my, like I said, my issues are of course war and just, there are a lot of people that yeah. still hate gay boys. So my know. grandfather was in world war two and he was in the military. God obviously got to travel around a lot. He um, saw Paris 1945. He, he said it was, not that great. Yeah, he wasn't impressed. Mostly falling down. There yeah, wasn't a lot Disney there. wasn't there yet. He wasn't Mostly impressed. Open. <laughs> yeah. You know what? That's probably hey. what it was. Open they space. didn't have Disney, so he was just like, meh, no. <laughs> I'll pass. No, I'm done. <laughs> no roller coasters. I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of boring. Really drab. You guys don't have flowers? Oh, they like, were all what do you guys do for fun. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, definitely a different climate for them then. Yeah, Katarina, I have one like one final question for you, like with with your son. So, yeah. um, with when he when he came out and decided to like, you know, be openly gay about it, like what's his stance on, um, like the group as a whole versus just owning your own journey? Chris is looking for advice. He's waiting to come out <laughs> gay to us. Okay. Um. Well, with my son. I had known for a very long time, probably around he was five or six. And um, I knew that he was either going to be a very effeminate mm. guy or he was going to be gay. And so when he came out to me, um, it was no surprise at all. But it was something where he, I was like, do you want anyone to know? And he's like, no, I'm like, okay. Well, then as he got older, I've been working with prides and things for a long time. Um, and mm. so he said that he wanted to start coming. And I said, okay, before we start doing this, you're going to now have to make a decision as to how open or how quiet you want to be about this. Like yeah. you don't there, you don't need to make a big speech about it or anything. It, it's nobody's business, but you do have to understand that if you start going to prides, you're going to be making a friends. They're going to be your friends on social media. They're going to start tagging yeah. you and things and you might get outed without, you know, meaning to. Yeah. So um, the conversation that we had at the time was that he wanted to tell a core group of people. And I, and one of the other points that I made at the time is like, there are people who might be hurt that they're finding out this way instead of hearing it from you. Correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. he, his decision in, at the time that he came out to me, he asked me not to tell his father. Okay. And um, in that, to be perfectly honest with you, I did not follow that because I was afraid of how his father would react because there's like a sense of machismo uh, amongst Latin men. Mm. Um, uh -huh. And so I said to him, I said, you know, this is coming. Th this is going to come at some point. And I said, please do not disappoint me. Don't upset me with how you react to this. Yeah. Um, okay. And so, you know, th this was like three years before he, he decided to come out. So he called my mother, which... I was kind of concerned with how my parents would do it because they're, you know, off the borders from Europe and they're very Catholic and, you know, that's a sin and that's all that. But my, my mother was like, for me, myself, I always knew he always want to play with the girl toys. And, you know, <laughs> and, then, and, then, and then like my son started like, I told my son, let me tell my mother, because if she was going to say something problematic, I'd rather she say it to me like yeah. in Portuguese or something and, and me be able to mediate that a little bit. I know I should have yeah, got him. Then, a, I know I should have got him that Barbie. It. You <laughs> told me directly. not to get him that Barbie doll. I told you I should have got him that but, Barbie. <laughs> Is he my the mother youngest? talked so loud, it was almost as if I had her on speaker. It made no difference whatsoever. He could hear clearly what she said. But after she said that, we all laughed. And then my father came into the room um, where my mother was, and she said in Portuguese, she said, you know, Fernando and Fernando, which is, you know, the Portuguese word for gay. And then my father goes, of course, all his friends are girls. <laughs> and so... <laughs> so then he proceeded to call Hector's parents and he called Hector's and he called my sister, um, which is my only sibling. And, and, you know, then he called Hector's sister, Hector's brother, all very supportive. The last person that he told was his father. So when we got to the house, 
um, Hector's in the backyard. My son went to the backyard. He told them, and and you know, he's like, "Dad, I'm gay." And then Hector, uh, I w- never had I appreciated him more than in that moment. He was like, "Hi, gay. I'm your dad." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. I like that. Yeah. And then, oh, that's great. And you know, and he was like, "You know, I don't care. I love you." Da-da-da. And then when my son came into the house, he was like crying. And I think like it didn't even dawn on him at that point how much he had been, you know. Yeah. like pent up it. like yeah, repressing, repressing yeah. um until he talked to the people the core people yeah and then like everybody was very supportive and very receptive which i know not yeah. is not everybody's experience exactly and, and, and that's the, that's the biggest takeaway that i that i try to express because i have family members on my wife's side family members on my side that are you know not openly gay and are o- also openly gay and i say it's not the main group like the group as a whole, the ones that kind of like want to shove the message down your throat, I have a like I have a, a a starch issue with because I don't like just because you identify as that doesn't mean that you're going to agree with everything or everything or everyone in that group and what they say. I will support the individual for their journey and the path that they're taking to get where they need to go. And that's, that's always that's been. why I, ex- I really appreciate you for accepting that I identify myself as a Klingon. <laughs> well, I, I honestly, yes, <laughs> I, I, I think like my biggest thing with, with anyone and, and just me personally, who you are is who you are. And that's it. Like, and, and that's, and that it's no more, no less than that. My son being gay is one it's just 90th a- percent of what makes up his personality. Yeah. If that's the thing that people focus on, why are you that obsessed with who my son has sex with? Like well, that's that, telling to them. That's the question that I'm saying. Um, yeah. But uh, my also the thing is, is like w- when I've had conversations anymore. with people who have a, yeah. who struggle with the fact that my son is gay. Yeah. Honestly. Or that the gay people exist is what exactly do you lose? Do I have to pay for it? No. What exactly do you, you lose by my <laughs> yeah. son being gay? Yeah. Like okay. what 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 exactly is taken from you? personally well, I think with my son being gay nothing I, correct. I think to end it off no, we have to remember have a tendency to have a, a value system within them and then when that when that value system is when they feel that it's violated they're only violating it because they're allowing it to violate within them they're not they're not taking into account that how does the other person feel because if mm. they're being that staunchly against it it's just it's strange well <laughs> To end it off, I think we should <laughs> quote. He's saying bye. He's probably got. Of course, really yes, bad. I do. He's um, past the pee. Yes, but you have to go potty. I do, but I say <laughs> we end this off with a line from one of my favorite doctors, Peter Capaldi. Hate don't be a lasagna. Hate is always foolish. Love is always wise. Never Correct. fail and to And also, be, don't be lasagna. <laughs> always try to be nice, but never fail to be kind. And never, I love that so never much. eat pears. Correct. What? That is the main goal I was going on, or the main meaning. Don't never eat, eat pears. pears. But I guess, you know, hate's always have foolish have us, and love is always wise. That's the reason why we have our mission statement here. This is like, it's all um, love. Everybody's included. Okay. Just have fun and then enjoy. And eat pears. And enjoy the ride. That's all it. love, no pears. Oh, no I think we found a new. Mo- I think we found a new motto: all love, no pairs. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the shops filling up quickly. Kelly has a lot of work to do. Just like his bladder. <laughs> yes, it is filling up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, gang. Bye bye. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. But that's why we are here, because we're here to support each other. We're here to help each other forget. I love each and every one of you. I love you too, buddy. And everybody else, mainly our Kelly and my brother. Yes. I guess. <laughs> so, what do you, so what, do you really think that the, the the game stream I'm doing is coming out looking good and sounding okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks amazing. The only way you can improve that is just you know normal stuff, just as you go, just improving your rig, improving different stuff. But your yeah. overall flow and everything, it's really good. I found out today, and I hope you're not mad. That um, I can't play PUBG with your account or, or using Game uh, Family Share. Oh, that sucks! You so, so you got to buy I'm, it. How much is lo- it now? Nope. 
I just logged into yours and played it on yours. Oh, well, there you go. I'm not, I, I honestly, I don't play that game. I don't think you ever played it. It was like, do you want to do the tutorial? I'm like, <laughs> I might not have actually. I have played one or two matches, but I didn't do the tutorial. Fuck that. I just went like, in it. You probably tried it. And we're like, eh, not for me. Yeah. No, I played a couple. I, I actually got, I got one first place and i don't know how because i was completely lost and confused He's the a, entire time you ever see those videos of these dudes that run around with no, like they're just naked just in pants yeah just in like underwear and like they're the last ones you're like what that like there's been a match where i was playing and i'm shooting these guys and i look around and the next thing you know it's just 1v1 that dude's run across the field with no guns just naked <laughs> and i'm like he did that on purpose i should just let him hit me with a frying pan just to, like because he lasted that long without. Well, you that. also have to remember the <laughs> memes that popped up about uh, PUBG, to where it was like high quality and the guys hiding in the in the grass, and then there was like really low quality to where you could see the guy in the grass. You have that yeah. advantage now. Yeah, that's uh, what I'm. But I just found out that you can't do cross-platform with PUBG, PC, and and console. <sighs> no, nope, not yet. That's that's they a shame. Said they don't. They said they don't want to do it because PC has the better advantage. Warzone okay. said they don't give a shit. <laughs> oh, they may not give a shit. Yeah. Um. Now so they see that money coming in. Well, yeah. I mean, money, money rules everything around me. Cream, Ca get the money. Cash, even the money. Cash, dollar, dollar bill, y'all. That's true. That's, that's what the word is. Yeah. Thank it's you, like, Way Clef. Thank you. Yeah. No, that was not why. That was not why clef. That was that was Method Man. Fucking from right. Wu Tang. Ah. Wu Tang. That's the only killer bees, like y'all. Two. One of the only two hip hop things I ever listened to was Wu Tang and a tribe called Quest. Yes, that that's all you need, man. How are your headphone issues, Katarina? Uh, I, apparently bad. <laughs> she apparently can't hear us. Oh, there man. you go. Like, nope, can you hear us hear now? <laughs> Nothing. Oh, there now you go. We can, we can there hear we you. Can we you can hear, hear you. us. I like your headphones. I can hear you. Okay. Ah, because you were just having headphone problems. That's why I was asking. Otherwise, I'm doing an ouncer voice for nothing. I don't know <laughs> what is wrong with either the tablet or the the headphones, but sometimes when I plug them in, it's like they don't work unless I reboot my tablet, and then it'll work. It's weird. Yeah. That's weird. Okay. So, um, as we always do in the pre-credit pre scene, we usually spoil WandaVision. Um, Nothing to spoil this week. Oh, that was we so good. It was such a good episode. Fantastic. But we actually have we WandaVision news. We very vindicated, um, in a sense, because I was pretty sure this was her doing it to herself. <laughs> well, it would be just like in the comics, you know, to where she's... I think she She's could still struggling. be could, being controlled by Mephisto. And, a like, little. he's overall, like, just kind of taking advantage of her. But, you know, I mean, that o overall, that episode was great with fucking yeah. Darcy. Oh, and mm -hmm. she's just like, what? I'm invested. And she's just watching this sitcom as she brilliant so as she is. She was awesome in that episode. She and the, the banter the between those two was awesome. Oh, way. yeah. Her and J uh, Jim Woo? Yeah. yeah. Jimmy Woo. It, it was great. I loved that episode. It was so fantastic that we got that behind the scenes. And Monica Rambo, her tying her into the snap was mm -hmm. great. Yeah. That just, it. And that, we've all uh, talked we did. or touched on what it would be like to the like to be snapped back in yeah. that second. And, and you know, the panic and the pandemonium. And it's nice, even though we only just got to see that one snippet, I hope that with WandaVision and maybe some of the other shows, they kind of flesh out what happens when five years later, your husband comes walking in that door and you had moved on to a new relationship or- Honey, new husband. Honey, this is Guillermo. Um, you're gonna he's love He's in him. the family now. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're open-minded. Like any Anything. <laughs> Now, one thing that is open-minded, my buddy uh, at work, Joe Gilmore, he he opened this up to me to the name of the show, Wanda Vision, and he right, said, "It's probably." He said, "What if it's not about? 
it's not you know separating Wanda and the Vision. It's actually like television, Wanda Vision. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it that it, like the sitcom feel to it. So that's the actual meaning. And I was like, that's a damn. I never thought of it like that. Well, they are TV shows. Exactly. Whoa, whoa, but I want to also, like, life? at the end of the first episode, you saw somebody with a remote in their hand changing the channel. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't fit with what we saw in this episode as any of those people. Well, that. Darcy laid the that. Easter egg for that because she said, it's, we're getting, we're seeing the delay. Somebody else is seeing this before us. And that, I think, is the person who's mainly influencing her. To where some people have also said that that may, maybe that's you Hello. know Hydra or somebody. Here? Hey Charlie. Say hi. You gonna say hi? hi. hi. <laughs> the youngest wall janger. Or per janger, however you look at it. So your thing is you think it's Mephisto? Mephisto. <clears throat> Why am I saying it like that? Mephisto? Yeah, yeah yes. he's really into fisting. Yes, Mephisto. It's How did they bad news that? for Wanda and Vision. If Mephisto is in there, <laughs> that, is that's not a reality you want to wake up to. Wow. We're not going to kink shame, but that's not a reality you want to wake up to is Mephisto. We didn't even start the pod hey. yet. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. And it was my that, fault this time. Interesting, don't, don't shocking point to end on. Don't speak for all of us, okay? <laughs> my views do not <laughs> equate to all viewers and participants in this podcast. My Fisto. <laughs> but my Fisto is also going to make you a point right here and click on that subscribe button above my head. You're going to find every Triforce podcast in a playlist above the dancing Bristo with the Kelly with the monkey on his shirt. You're going to find the very best Perjangers and wall hangers video for you. And of course, as always, dr- not drive on log. Not drive game on. on. <laughs> game on, boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs>